I was watching some videos, some of your... TikTok stopped showing me your um, posts organically. Yeah, I'm in the doldrums at the minute with I don't TikTok. Know why. Like Have you done something? Have you mentioned something? Uh, no. What happens with TikTok is uh, it will promote you sometimes, then it'll ask you to pay for it uh, when it's not promoting you. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I could. I could spend money on it if I wanted to, just to promote myself and stuff like that. But I don't see the point in it. I'm doing it for my own enjoyment yeah. rather than yeah, don't, don't, anything. Yeah, don't get into that, mate. That's the reason I like your account. Yeah. Because it's like, it's just you. And it, it's yeah, hard. Yeah. It's harder to find these days because you get... Um, oh, I've it's just a load of crap, isn't it? it I've really mentioned is. it before, mate. So I, about six months ago, I was able easily to do one podcast a week. Easy. Yeah. Because I tend to find people on social media, either in the trade groups that I'm in or TikTok. Mm. And that it, eventually I, th- I, uh, I leaned to more towards TikTok because um, obviously people who are talking on TikTok are, are a lot more open to talking about themselves on a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Where I, I will still grab tradesmen because they're interesting to me, tradesmen mm. from groups, but it's harder with they're busy and they don't really want to talk, but I want them to. Uh, So yeah, the point was the point I was making. So yeah, um, it was easier even six months ago because uh, I always say um, TikTok is more real to me. It's real people closer to being real than um, Instagram. Do you know what with with TikTok, you're allowed to within reason to say what you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you try and do that on other platforms, you're shut down straight away. Yeah. You can actually have an opinion on TikTok still. Yeah. And they're trying to stop it. They're trying to ban it in America. They know. And this is what we was, uh, we had that chat earlier. We were talking about it. Yeah. Uh, again, not to get into conspiracy theories or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's they don't want us to communicate, and that's the problem, because everything's in plain sight now. What yeah. en- anybody's doing, literally, it doesn't have to be government. It's literally anybody yeah. on this planet. We can find out, and they don't want that. Yeah. They they want to shut it down. They want to keep it. Everything's got yeah. to be a secret. So my, my take on on the Americans wanting to, they basically want to force them to sell it, don't they? Yeah, you probably to America, so they yeah. they can sanction it, and then yeah. Well, you the, need to sell it to one of our companies, which, mm. uh, and this is where the conspiracies come on. One of these companies, which will probably be controlled by the CIA or whatever. Yeah, and then um, they can monitor it. And, well, yeah. and then and then we can control it. So the thing that they're saying they're trying to protect the people from, they want to mm. do. They want to do that. So they so we, we we need to protect national security, and that's fine if if that's. Mm if that's what they were doing, <laughs> but they're not, they want to do it. No. They just want to do it. What, what they think the, whatever other platforms are already doing and they can't control it because Chinese companies are Chinese companies. No, right. yeah. yeah. They've got no say in it, yeah. but they can ban it. This is the thing. They can ban it. Mm, it might be tricky, but yeah, they, they could. And uh, another thing, right. With, with all China gets loads of grief, right. And, and, and it probably deserves a lot of it because the same as our governments do live, deserve grief for things that they do. But if you think about our government, when I say our governments, I'm talking about Western governments, right? Mm. They're worried about foreign owned social media taking your data or doing whatever they do. All of our own social media do that and more. Yeah, yeah. They all Especially Facebook, notorious for it. Yeah, so they're all doing it. I mean, have you ever done that experiment where you, uh, you phone your mate and you talk about dog food. Yeah. Have you ever done that? I've done it. And if I phone somebody up and talk about dog food and go on my Facebook, advertise dog food. It happens a lot. Never been proved, has it? But there's loads and loads of examples of that where mm. not even phoning someone, just talking to someone. Yeah. Like, my missus said it the other day. What was it about? No, I can't remember. But she's like, I, I know it was, yeah. I've just mentioned something to you. And I was like, did you search for it or anything? Like, have you done anything? Because it's quite it's quite good, the algorithm. The, the marketing it is pretty good. So you might have just lingered on looking at something for a bit too long. So it's all, 
she liked that, so I'll send her an advert just in case she wants yeah. to buy one. But you're right, there could be audio uh, tracking. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Why wouldn't they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the, no, the, I don't know what you mean. The, the, <laughs> anyway, we said we weren't going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, mate. The, it's basically, the, the, the Western pro- governments are saying we want to protect you. They want to do the same. And a big thing for me, right, so China's got this... Um, Social score system, you know, yeah. Like social. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a credit score. Yeah, yeah, credit score system. So they can get like penalised for playing computer games for too long or buying too much from uh, an off license, or and then yeah, they get punished with things. Yeah, like, they can't buy a train ticket, or they, yeah, yeah, they get sanctioned. We'll slow your internet down. You can't travel. Whatever. So if you notice, and this is just me, I don't, this isn't. I haven't researched this. I've never ever heard a Western politician say that that's a bad thing that they're doing in China. They'll say no, everything yeah. else. They'll say everything yeah. else, but they've, I've never heard them mention once the social score system. And my theory on that is is because they like it and they want to do it as well. Well, they are. They're starting to creep it in anyway. Yeah. Eventually, they, control, they'll try it. Control. Yeah. They'll be a, for the UK. It'll be. Oh no! There's there's too many foreigners here, and we need to find out who everybody is. So we yeah. need. Well, yeah, we this need... is possible. Well, they tried to do it yeah. through COVID. Yeah, they tried to. Uh, they, yeah, and that's what that was. They tried to sneak it in, and it failed. And it didn't they'll, happen. they'll just keep trying. Yeah. I mean, if it take the eventually over decades, they'll get it, and there'll be a gov.uk um, digital wallet. Yeah, and that's your. That's like WeChat in China now. So. In China, if they've got WeChat, it's like everything. You pay for stuff, it's your ID, your chat, send messages, it's everything. Whereas we would see WeChat as just like WhatsApp. That's not like that for them. They've got a QR code that does everything. Everywhere they go, everything they pay for. And I think eventually we'll be forced to do that. And, And the way that they'll do it is, we won't be forced to do it, we'll be fucking begging for it. Because yeah. that that's like... A theory with all the like the NHS is going to shit. You'll own nothing shit. and be happy. Yeah, mm. they'll overwhelm. And it's true all. because they'll push, they push you. You look at the people how they're repressed in this country. Some people have got nothing. They can't feed their children properly, yeah, yeah. and they will be begging for it now. Yeah. So that, it will happen. That's and they're taking the door in. Yeah. The rich are getting so rich in this country at the minute, and the, uh, the divide is so big mm-hmm. that people will be begging for it in the end. Yeah. And Please help me. That's how they'll sell it because be. they'll say yeah. you're in danger. The infrastructure has been overwhelmed, which was by fucking design. And mm. the only way we can fix it is by finding out who everybody is. So we need to give you a number and you need to yeah. get a, a digital wallet. And then if you haven't got one, then we'll know that you're up to no good or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to sell it that way. Yeah, I'll make you right. And that's what they do. Yeah. It's just like with the COVID. But did you get vaccinated? No. So no. this is something that I would never, until fairly recently... I would never have admitted on the podcast because it was like a yeah you, yeah hot, it you was hot, got, bit, got hot potato yeah and do you know what now the people who got vaccinated are the ones who regret it and that's the funny thing well the thing and well, you look at all the stars in America who standing up and oh, oh, there was loads of them yeah. like top A list stars telling people if you don't get it you're crazy <laughs> do you know what I mean the government's obviously my view for on it. that's never changed right so it's it, I fell out with my mates because of it. And no, I fell out with people over it. I fell out with people I didn't people even have it. a strong opinion of it. I was like, all right, if you want not to, it. get it. Yeah. But I'm not. And then well, the, the argument started because of things like they would say, but that's selfish. And I'm like, how? Like, where's the information coming from where you think yeah. I'm selfish? If... Right, if it doesn't help me, which I didn't think it would at the time because of all the the, the actual data they were given us, age ranges, um, underlying issues, all this crap. And I was like, mm. I don't really think I need it. Um, and I think I might have already had COVID anyway and all this crap. And I was like, I don't, I don't need it. But then people would call you selfish. And I was like, why? Where's that information come from? Because in their heads, they're thinking you, you can affect someone else. I'm like, no one's yeah. ever fucking said that. Mm. Who said that? Where's that? Well, it made from? no difference on transmission of it, did it? So yeah. I don't understand. But for some reason, they'd convinced a lot of people that it did. Yeah. And I'm like, but no one's ever actually said that. And then I said, you're a conspiracy theorist. I'm like, why? Because it, it I've read more government. than you have. 
Yeah, it was the government brainwashing campaign for this country. I don't see them. And they stood there and they lied to us. And I said, I'll tell you what, at the beginning of this, I said more people are going to die of the vaccination and what they've put in place than will ever die of this disease. And it's true. I don't know. People, I think I knew knew somebody who died of uh, cancer. They was having chemo and they stopped their chemo and gave them tablets at home. Yeah, you're not the only person I've spoke to who thinks that, mate. It's, They've got blood on their hands, this government, massively, and it will be swept under the carpet, as usual. Yeah. There's a, lot, there's a lot of things that have been linked to it, and it's hard for people to talk about it now, because I'm not I'm not either way. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I've always said the same thing. If you want to yeah. get it, get Just, it. Yeah. No, that's right. And if, if it's helping you, great. If it yeah. helps other people, great. But I didn't want to, because I didn't... Even no. if it even if it didn't help me, right? If there was a small chance that it could help other people, I would have done it. Because I'm thinking, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm helping other people now. But but there never was. No one ever said it would. No, the evidence wasn't there, was no. it? Well, do you know what? I got a phone call from my doctors actually because they kept em- uh, texting me and emailing me saying, "Come down and get your COVID vaccination." And I've got AF, which is a heart condition, and uh, that's <laughs> the reason. Uh, what's that? I wouldn't go anywhere near it then. Obviously. No, I didn't for that reason. And uh, she, she was really put out when I said, I'm not saying I'm not going to have it, but I'm going to say I'll, I'll wait and see what happens in the future. Yeah. And if I decide to have it then, it's when I'll put you down as declined then. Right. Well, you can do what you want. Do yeah. what you want. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but there's people what losing their job. Make? And there was people losing their jobs in hospitals and stuff like threat on the threat of it. They could, the government could never pull it off. Yeah. And I think the pointing at moment was when that doctor stood up and I can't remember, I think it was, I can't even remember it was, I think it was Matt Hancock. And uh, he was on about the vaccination and the doctor in the hospital oh, said, I, I'm yeah. not having it. And uh, because of, and he lists the reasons yeah. and it was on mainstream news. And I think that's yeah. where, where it changed at, yeah. at that point. But at, at the time that doctor was, who was a doctor, so it wasn't even me who knows fuck all, was saying similar things to what I was yeah, saying. Yeah. But at the time he was a conspiracy theorist. So then the doctor who's got just giving people information becomes a conspiracy yeah. theorist because he's the one with facts, but he's a conspiracy theorist because he's disagreeing with the non-factual with the information, yeah, with the government, which is not right. Fucking odd. Very, but do you know what? Now? When you think back, I mean, do you know what? Human beings forget a lot of stuff, but if you actually spend an hour and sit there and think how them two years affected your life, affected your mental health and what they've done, I was lucky. I lived in a nice house uh, with a nice garden, hot tub. I, put, I used to go sh- like shooting in the garden in the afternoon. We, we lived the life of Riley. I lived near the beach. It was perfect. There's people in high rise blocks of flats stuck yeah. in for m- months and months and months. Yeah. Through a summer, one of the hottest summers. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. Yeah. The, in those places as well. So I saw London flats like that. So they've got like a communal area of park and slides yeah. and they blocked off the fucking slides and stuff so no I know they did do you know what they did where I am they like, what, uh, blocked what, off what all the screens and everything Why? how does that help anybody yeah I don't I, honestly mate it was crazy the, it needs a big big um review to say why did you do all this these things do you know what and I'm I get hoping, it at the time it might have been alright is it that bad how bad is it it was never alright I'm hoping in 20 30 years time they'll be learning in schools what we went through and so it never happens again I th- I've because got a feeling it'll biggest... happen again it will happen again do you reckon yeah I it, hope not I don't I don't think people will put up with it this time it, it won't be exactly we... the same thing but it'll, but it'll it's be the something it's the cried wolf because yeah if they try and do it to us again, everybody will go, <laughs> you can do one, mate. And yeah. it could be really serious. So they've, they've, they've done it. They've literally, they've ruined it. I think they'll come up with something else. And this, this again, you sound like a fucking conspiracy theorist when you say things like this, but I just genuinely believe that yeah. to, to force in something yeah. like digital wallets and things like that, they'll do something where people will be scared enough to say, shit, we need that. Yeah. It's a bit like that thing, the alert system on your phone. <laughs> I mean, what was all that about? I turned mine off, so I never got the alert. I uh, didn't. Something happen where the where it was ideal for the alert, and it just never went off. It was a floods or uh, something? 
Well, there was we've had loads of really serious weather conditions in this country, yeah. high winds and stuff like. Yeah. Where was the alert system there? Maybe it's not. Flooded. Loads of people died in this country of the the, the floods and oh, stuff like. Aren't that. we Where a strange alert? country though? Because all right, so a, a national <laughs> alert thing, and I I thought at the time, what a great idea because if some if a child goes missing in where I live, like my postcode, they could yeah. send an alert to everyone in that postcode to say, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. But that's and not. That would work. So I read about that's a good it, idea. and that's not what it's for. That wasn't what it's for. So I was like, all right, for natural disasters, get out the area or storm coming, whatever. Then a yeah, storm came. There have been no uh, alerts. What the fuck's it for? <laughs> that's what I mean. We're a funny country. We're very accepting of stuff because so they announce we've got a new alert system and it can take over your phone and send you an, an alarm. And everyone's like, oh, okay. So so now we've got that. It costs. I'm, I don't even know, but I'm going to guess billions. Oh, would have been. Yeah, I don't know. Without, I, that's yeah. a pure Someone guess. Someone got rich out. Yeah. <laughs> I've never looked into it, but I guess it costs billions. Mm. And what's it for? Because it's not for what I've just said. It's not for natural disasters because we've had them. So what the fuck is no. it for? War. And at the end of the day, uh, if what, we what, else, what else nuclear, is left? <laughs> if we went into nu- nuclear war with Russia, you'd be, you're better off not knowing yeah. because you're going to be dead anyway. Do you know what I mean? So why would you want to alert on your phone? Three minutes late, you're dead. I think it's just another step conspiracy theory again to making people afraid (laughs) it's just an extra little thing another little nudge because the government this isn't a conspiracy the government does have a nudge department yeah they're they're very clever people like um uh economists so not human economists that deal with like how do we get people to do stuff and things like they'll just you know like pay your taxes send you a little letter a little nudge the nudge department arrange all of that and it's like they nudge people to do things like universal credit or get a job or whatever. And I think that could have easily, it it probably was discussed if, if like, it's not as conspiratorial as what I'm thinking, but they've definitely discussed, what if we set up an emergency alert system that goes on everyone's phone and that'll nudge them a bit more into the direction of thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. shit, why do we need that? And that's just another little nudge towards scaring mm. people to, to enough to say mm. we need a digital wallet and it, i think that's it, where it's all aiming if you, you look back at covid it was it was scare it was a scare tactics by the government i mean f- f- i remember they had uh, the things what stick out in my mind is uh when they had the hospital in china the super hospital being built and they had all the diggers digging it and they got to build this hospital because this is really serious yeah that that was three years ago that footage hospital was already built and it's a scare campaign. And I remember also seeing uh, in Italy, when they, they had it bad there, uh, the nurses and doctors had bruises on their faces from PPE. And that doesn't happen. Yeah. And it, this is on BBC News, they're telling us this. Uh, it is. You're right what you're saying. You're right what you're saying. It is. It's just to keep you all, all the time scared enough that you'll do what they want. I don't think it's a wild thing to say. So however conspiratorial, my, it's not even, this is mad that we call it conspiracy theories because it's not. Conspiracy theories is like aliens and fucking whatever. Yeah. It's just a different way of looking at things and not quite trusting what you've been told. But I don't think it's too crazy to say that the news that's available like the mainstream news, as they call it, mm. mainstream media, is not always truthful. To no. put it to put it lightly, <laughs> I turned the news off uh, about a month into COVID when I realised because I bought it. I, at first, I bought it, and I thought, "Oh fuck, we're in a bit of trouble here." And I was genuinely worried. And about a month later, I kind of worked out. Hold up a minute, it's just like having the flu. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I've stopped watching the news at that point. I turned it off. And well, I've not watched it since. That's the thing that convinced me it was a load of bollocks, the news. Yeah. Because they were. I'm very like, we talked about it earlier, I'm very, I'm the kind of person who doesn't really go with the flow anyway, which doesn't mm. always do me favours, but like, you know, like, fit in, do this, make sure you do that, follow these yeah, rules. Yeah. I've always been a little bit like, why? <laughs> Yeah, ask the what, question. Why, got you know, why am I doing this? So yeah. the news being so over the top with it, that's conv- mm. that's what convinced me. I was like, this is bollocks. Something's yeah. not right about this. And then the first time physically that I saw something, I rang my brother as soon as I went to the kids' school because schools were still open. And my point at the time was, all right, so if this is so bad, right? And at the time, I was in two minds. Is this bad? Can this kill me? 
I was genuinely at the, at the start I, I of it. I was the same. I was the same. But schools were open. So, yeah. my, so my point at the time was, and I've said it before on the podcast, all right, and I argued with my boss about it at the time. I was made redundant, but before I was made redundant, I was arguing yeah. with my boss because he wanted to keep the shops open. Not arguing, debating, discussing. And, um, and I was like, listen, if it was me at the moment, just close the shops. Other businesses are closing. The, the government's forcing them to close. Mm. We don't know how bad it is. And by the mind, this is me who now thinks it's a load of bollocks. <laughs> yeah, I know. So He's at, laughing the time, about it. at the time, I was like, just close the shops. It's not fair on the staff. So businesses are closing because the government's telling them to, but schools are open. Yeah. So my point was, this is fucking crazy. Is it bad or is it not bad? Cause yeah, you're either going one way or the other. Why and the kids, kids are super They're yeah. the worst ones. <laughs> why are you sending kids to school if it's, not, yeah. if it's really, really bad? It can kill you. Why are you closing gyms yeah, yeah. and whatever but you'd send kids to and school it, I'll tell you what if you've got one kid in school with an illness fucking 600 they've kids are going to get it, it. It's and then they're going to take it home to their family so yeah. you're right what you're saying. You're it's correct. happening now at schools but they flipped it <laughs> on the schools now so if you go to the kids school now um, there's posters on the doors that say if your kid's got a sniffle or feeling sick it's fine send them to school yeah that's send them in I'll see that the other day how mad's that I yeah know, I'll see what? it all right, but that's like the total opposite of what you were saying before. But then yeah. what happened? So I do that. I've always done that. My kids are a little bit ill. I don't believe them anyway. I'm like, go school. You know when they're <laughs> ill. So I sent him school and then he was like under the weather. So they rang me. And when I got there, he, he was sick. He was literally, yeah. he, I think he just coughed. You know when you cough a lot? And it makes yeah, you yeah. sick. I think he'd done that. Mm. And then he was sick on the school floor. I was like, bastard. Because that's like gar- guaranteed 48 hours now. And like the the receptionist said to me, 48 hours, see you in two days. I'm like, fucking hell. So they go from yeah. one extreme to the other. <laughs> if they're, if they're sick, yeah. bring them in. But if they're sick, keep them off for two days. I'm like, fuck's sake. Joe, I'll tell you a funny story quickly. Uh, my brother, when he was younger, I think we was only really young. He was probably seven or eight years old. And uh, he went, I don't feel well, to my mum. And she went, no, you're going to school, you're going to school. Exactly the same. He got picked up by ambulance from the school. His appendix burst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he was all right. Once the guy, how old was he? Uh, About seven or eight. Yeah. Mum, I really don't feel when my belly hurts. Yeah, right, you'll go to school. And that was it. Yeah, Yeah. he went there, and the next thing she got a phone call, he's in the hospital. Oh, dear. The thing is, at that age, as soon when you say, oh, go on then, you fuck. We always used to do it, though, when we were kids. We always. Because they'll do it again. Uh, we used yeah. to have the school board brand. I remember we was uh, I used to live in Loughton. I don't know, I was probably about 12 or 13 at the time. And uh, knock on the door, she went, quick, go, all oh, go and get in bed. So us, us boys, um, well, me and my brother, and we was laying in bed and it was a school board people coming around really? to see where we was. But yeah, my mum used to do that job. Really? Yeah, a few, <laughs> good few years ago. I don't, I don't know what they do anymore. I think they just send the police, don't they? Don't they fine you? Uh, yeah, I think it's fines now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. they've got yeah, cut cut a person out of the loop, just fine fine you. Well, I think that's gone up now to eighty quid, isn't it, or something like that. I don't know. Mate, we could talk about schools. I've talked about schools before, with schools being academies. My missus is a teacher. I've got a very strong opinion on schools being academies, and I think eventually we could get into like a school shouldn't be a business, but then I don't think. We talked about that the other day, didn't we? I don't think steelwork should be a business or electricity or anything like that, but certainly not a fucking school. Yeah. But they are now. Are are all schools academies then? Not all of them, no, but a lot of them are now, yeah. Because where my daughter went, that's an academy. Yeah, a lot of them are She's left now. She's... Yeah, Yeah. no, I didn't know that. Do you know what? Do you know what'll happen? I talk out my arse a lot of the time, but I think this might be true. (laughs) Go on. A, A large percentage of those academies will go bust. Right, and then the ones that are left will turn into like central hubs for a shitload of schools, rather than one or two, or maybe three or four. And what? Yeah, you could be right. When you look at it, it's the same with police stations. It's the same with everything like that. It, everything gets closed down, and you get one big one. Yeah, but do you know what that? Do you know what that means for schools? So they've gone from being a council. So I live in Staffordshire, so Staffordshire County Council that looks after however many thousand schools to say mm. 50 academies 45 of those academies will go bust I'm just making shit up now the other 5 will merge to become super academy 
A and super academy, yeah. So then that one academy then starts looking after all the schools rather than just five. And then that, do you know what? What they've just done is created the council again. They've just created a central yeah. council for the schools, but we have to pay them more now because they've got a fucking CEO and a director and a CFO and whatever. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But then they don't need the council. But they'll still have the council. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Everything. It, how how anybody it signed off schools well. becoming academies is fucking beyond me. It's it's ridiculous, honestly. Yeah. My missus doesn't. My yeah, missus funny. right can't get a fucking pens. I'm I'm not kidding. She can't get pens for the classroom. The teachers no, no. can't. The teachers can't get pens, and the kids haven't got like <clears throat> pens to. Do you know what though? That's been. That's been going on for years. I remember. Uh, I remember when I was at school, there was a stationery cupboard, and they had a teacher who used to go in there and just get whatever they wanted. But mm. over the years, where I've seen my children grow up, it, it's changed. I'm going back 15, 20 years ago, that was all changing. Yeah. It's always been the same. It te- teachers get loads of stick. I've talked about this before as well on the podcast. Because my missus mm. is a teacher and a lot of her family are teachers, I see it. So I always say to people, all right, you think teachers get great holidays and easy hours and good pay go be a teacher because there's yeah. a shortage they'll take you if you've got half a brain they'll take you but you won't be able to do it because the only people who teach love teaching because it's fucking yeah, hard exactly that. it's really hard it's, they don't yeah. they'll say oh they finish at three and they get loads of holidays like they don't finish at three none of them no teacher finishes when the school finishes none they'll probably finish at about five maybe six then they'll come home. Then they can't do the planning for the day after or the week after or the month after during the day because they're fucking teaching. So then they have to do the planning at home, loads of it, mm. depending on what age group they teach. Then they have to do all the marking at home, the reports. And then, because they love the job and they love the kids, they pay out of their own fucking pocket for displays, pens, paper. Yeah, yeah. Mate, my printer, I never use my printer because I, I print labels with a label printer for my stuff. But I've got a printer behind me. It's never fucking stop. It never stops. But it's not for me. It's for school. Yeah, it's school school work. The printer ink's expensive. Yeah, it's bloody expensive as well. So yeah, yeah. I don't, it's, I don't know. I just think we've gone so backwards in this country. It, you know, we, I'll tell you what. Uh, yesterday we watched. Uh, we were sitting here. You know, when you sit there and you go, well, "Should we watch a film?" Yeah, come and watch a film. So I ran my girlfriend's ass, and they uh, were going through films. And I went, "I'll tell you what." I've got a good film for you. Have you ever seen it? It's Fury. Yeah, I love it. Brilliant Brad film. Pitt. Excellent. And she went, yep. She went, oh, I don't like war films. I went, you're going to like this one. Brilliant. Trust me, because it's not just about war. It's about everything. And what was that? 1943, I think that was set. And uh, we talked about the film after. And I went, isn't it mad when you think about it? Yeah, that we've not learned lessons from that. Because Russia and Ukraine at the minute are doing exactly the same. And I know... Uh, somebody uh, from a different country, I won't mention any names, who's come over to train Ukrainian soldiers in the Midlands. Really? Uh, to send them back. Yeah, young young boys. And uh, he was paid a handsome amount of money. I'm not going to say how much it was. It was a shit ton of money uh, per week to do it. And uh, he, 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 I overheard the conversation, uh, what he was saying, because I was sitting next to the person he was saying it to, and he said, most of them boys, yeah, next week will be dead. And we've not learned our lesson from that. They're training from Ukrainians the in the UK. Oh, yeah. What do they do? Fly them here learn. first. So they come What's here. that, sorry? So Ukrainians come here, Ukrainian soldiers. Yeah, to get, yeah. and we're training. getting trained. Yeah. Let me guess, it's a private company that trains them. Uh, he, well, he was a soldier. The guy who was training them, he works for the uh, fire brigade out in the He's country now. And he was given a contract to come over to train him. Fuck me. I didn't know that. Yeah, there you go. So this is another thing that you'll get accused of. And that was on the lowdown. You mustn't say anything. You mustn't say anything. (laughs) You'll get accused of um, conspiracy with that as well. because if It's not conspiracy. That is facts. If you don't don't just believe what's on the news. But it's obviously Mm. like, what the fuck's going on? Like... Yeah. It's like they want the war. They want to manufacture it. They want it to happen. Well, yeah. If you boil it down businesses do forget about people dying and all that think of a Mm. business as a non-human entity of course those businesses want war the ones that benefit from it as a business obviously people don't want war normal people politicians might but most of the fucking normal people in the world don't but if you think of a business as like 
AI, say. Can you imagine if AI was running business? They'd say, right, oh, what's the best possible fucking scenario for this business? World war. So then AI creates a world war for that yeah. particular... I'm not saying it will, but that's ideal for particular businesses who make money from it. Great. And then obviously polit- businesses only do well a lot of the time because they need support from politicians. So they've got lobbyists mm. and people in, in each other's pockets and what have you got each other's well, ears. That's why it's all corrupt, isn't it? We'll talk so. about corruption in another phone call and how <laughs> brown envelopes work. And it works, it works all the way up to the top. Yeah. It does. It works at our level. Of course it does. And it works all the way to the top. And it's the the, I've never, the corruption in our government is unbelievable. You look at the PPE contracts. Matt Hancock was giving to the landlord of his pub, and you know, and Richie Sunak can't get his WhatsApps back. I mean, come on, it's all everything's recorded. If if the police wanted my WhatsApps, they would get them. I could break my phone, and they would still get them. But they can't get his. Yeah, no. That's that's the thing that just disappoints me, mate. Because like. Some of it, like, I just use my friend group as an example, but I think it's probably true for the whole country. I'd like to talk to people about that to say, like, what, what is actually going on? Because politicians, I don't give a fuck if they what party politician, what party they're in. They're all the fucking same to me. Yeah. Wankers. Yeah. They're all, I'm sure there's some, a lot of politicians, and I'm sure, I'm fucking certain that a lot of them go into it with all the best intentions, and they, and they care. And then get corrupt, corrupt, turn corrupt. Well, while they, they either it. they either get stuck at a very low level, playing like trying to play the game, and they mm. can't they can't progress because they're not corrupt, or they become corrupt, and then you've lost them because yeah. they're like, I'm not going to say anything because I get 120 grand a year and all these expenses, so I'm not going to mm. rock the boat. They aren't going to stand up and say, why are schools being shit on? Why, yeah. are, why are these areas where people are living in poverty not getting mm. more support? They're not going to stand up and say that because they get 120 grand a year, no, expenses. That's right. well, do you know what we whatever. could do? And I've said this in the past. We, I mean, everybody wants us to live in a digital age, cashless society, everything's digital now, which is okay. You know, we've progressed. And uh, what I think we should do is get rid of Parliament completely. And we should have uh, a, a vote in the evening for 15 minutes on stuff on your smartphone, yeah, and you make the decisions for your local area. You'd still need some form of government there hmm. to control the country, but we don't need these idiots in Parliament. Or It's a circus. We don't need them. Uh, yeah. You know, the collective, you don't want to vote, don't vote. You've got your 15 minutes in the evening. If you want to sit there, do you want this, yes, no? Do you want this, yes, no? It's really easy. Hmm. And then the collective in that area... It will win. Yeah. It, well, we're a small country, but I still, uh, I've thought about this before. It, I thought about it because of America. Like, how can America have one person in charge? It's fucking huge. It's like, no, I know, yeah. But it's the same for us. We're, we're small compared to that, but we're huge. There's a lot of people. Like, just mm. even if you split it to Scotland, Wales, and England, then you could split it even further than that. But the culture is so different all over the country that we'd mm. probably be better off with power split. Remember the yeah. petty kings back back in the day? <laughs> we should no, do that. we should do that again. Well, it's like be, before we became probably I don't know I don't know what's what's the history. Probably the Romans created Britain as Britannia or whatever they called it. Yeah. But before that, it was split into like little areas with kings yeah, of each yeah. area. Obviously, they were always fighting. We don't we don't want to be always fighting. But if they split it up like that and said, right, that's you're in charge of that area, you're in charge of that area. But we'd need some kind of agreement you know a little bit like the the premier leagues uh discussing with the efl now we'll give you mm. some money because we make more money but we also need you to do well that kind of agreement yeah, Where yeah. obviously if it was split into different areas which just it kind of is but with one government in charge of everything so obviously london is always going to be the hub of most of the money comes into london we'd have to have some agreement where they would be like all right stoke you're fucking. You're in the championship. We're in the Premier League. We'll give you some crumbs because yeah, we yeah. do actually need you to be okay. We don't. If you fail, that would be a problem for us. So mm. we'll give you some crumbs. So some kind of agreement like that. I don't know. Well, you look at the councils going. It's bankrupt. too idealistic. Councils are going bankrupt in this country. Yeah. So Birmingham's the, the one on the news, isn't it? It's the blatant waste of money. I think that's what it is, yeah. and. Uh, it's uh, uh, there's a, a job 
uh, that I uh, got put, put forward for. It's over a million pound and the government are funding it. It's a government funded job. And uh, you can make your own numbers up because they don't care how much they pay. And this is the issue with it. I saw someone talking about Birmingham and he said, it was an economist, and he said, the problem isn't, so everybody pays the council tax in this area, whatever um, whatever area Birmingham covers somewhere, black country or whatever they cover, I don't know. That's not the issue. said everything, all the money gets allocated to the correct places. Mm. The reason they're going bankrupt, you can pinpoint everything that's making them go bankrupt has nothing to do with normal services. It's all this other crap that they're wasting money on. So that it, all they had to do was cut all of that out and everything would have been fine. But now yeah. everybody's... What they'll do is they say, we won't go b- bankrupt. The, the government will bail us out, so everyone else's tax money will bail us out. But now your tax, your um, council tax is going up to pay for it. That's right. Yeah, it has to come from somewhere, the money. It always has to come from somewhere. And that's us, If you boil it down, and like I say, without... I, I suppose I am a bit of a conspiracy theorist in, in the modern <laughs> in the modern term. I don't think I am personally. I just think I don't yeah. believe everything. No, no. But... Do you know what? I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all. I'm the same as you. I look at things from every angle and I make my own mind up. And you, you yeah. can see corruption. You can see it. You yeah. know, some people bury their head in the sand and think, well, it don't affect me. I'll just get on with it. But mm-hmm. what, people like us question stuff. And that's, that's the, the difference. We're not conspiracy theorists. We ask to question. Yeah, but we're we're natural conspiracy theorists these days because fucking everything's a conspiracy theory. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I believe the world's round. I don't believe it's flat. <laughs> no, I and that it. drives me mad. That's well, a conspiracy theory. I that like is science. Me. Yeah, that's a conspiracy theory. That you can read about it if you want. Royal family conspiracy theory. Where's the like? There's no fucking. They haven't helped themselves by the way that they've handled it but it is a conspiracy theory because mm. because it is <laughs> it's like all that crap there might be some truth to it but that's the kind of cause, and I'll read about it because it makes me laugh because I'm like this is yeah. great but I don't fucking believe it so mm. yeah why did we, we yeah. oh yeah so that was what I was saying TikTok stopped showing me your um, posts um, yeah so I, I went on and had a look and the, re- the reason I like yours, right, and I did get into saying I used to be able to find people easily because there was plenty of people like you who were just like, yeah. you would make a post about this is the way I'm feeling. It was, run- I suppose, vul- vulnerable people, like, and being openly vulnerable, like, which is great. But these days it's a lot harder uh, mm. because people are getting... They, they want to do well on TikTok. So they're getting to learn what they need to do to, to exactly tr- that, trick the yeah. algorithm. And they're making it happen. So oh, I don't use. Oh, do you know what I've got? It's really funny. There's this uh, guy, uh, uh, Council Scum, he's called. Look him up and have a look. Council he, Scum. Uh, Council Scum. He is the most weird. He makes my skin crawl. And he, uh, <laughs> I've found over the last week, I've had three people use me and t- uh, t- take a snippet out of my uh, video for their own benefit. And there's a lot of people doing that at the minute on TikTok. What, and reply to it with, like, negative stuff? Oh, yeah, ma- massively negative. Massively. Great. Uh, have a look back. Have, have a look. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll try and send it over to you, because it's on my uh, TikTok. It's yeah. come up on my thing. I'll find it and send it over to that's you. That's great, mate. That'll get and you loads of followers. Negative stuff gets well, way more views. Do you know what? I followed him. I went, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sent him a love art. Thank you. And uh, thanks for the new followers. Yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. So I, I p- believe it or not, and I really appreciate it, which because it's like blows my fucking mind that people actually listen to this podcast. But I get people messaging me saying, "Why hasn't there been an episode for a while? Have you stopped doing it?" Because mm. even this, right? So if you do a podcast, they're supposed to be one a week. Yeah. Because and I'm like, well, why? <laughs> it's like, why can't I do three, a, like four a week, five do you know a week, it's, none it's a week? The same with- it's the same with TikTok. Uh, they say do three videos a day for eighteen months, Why? and you'll be all right. Who cares? Do them. my my thing with with the podcast is right. All right, I was forcing myself to do it once a week, and it was stressing me out because it doesn't make yeah. any money. People don't believe me. It costs money to do this podcast. Why do you do it? Why do you? I've got. I was going to ask you that question anyway. Why do you do it? So, um, so when I was made redundant. 
a lot. I had loads going through my head at the time because I was like, "Do I even belong in that kind of environment? Like, mm. do I fit in?" Because I've always had that problem with. I don't know. I suppose what, what level did I get to? Middle management or whatever you want to call it. It was like a manager of sorts with people mm. under you and all that crap. <coughs> and I never, never really enjoyed it. I liked uh, helping people and having people on underneath me, like trainees or apprentices or whatever, because yeah. I could say to them, "You don't." So, I one example I gave. So, I had. Um, uh, a graduate they used to put graduates with senior people in the businesses and I had a, a girl once who was a she was actually really fucking intelligent way more intelligent than I was but she was nice and mm. she was with another department for a while and she had drilled into her that basically to succeed she was she wanted to be a buyer so she had had it drilled into her that to succeed in that environment she needed to be a bitch right. and I'm like who the fuck told you that? And she's like, another woman. I'm like, no. It's like, the goal is not to be a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Don't be like that. So you might think, because they're the kind of people that said, listen, just be nice and be genuine. As long as it's what you are like. And that was my advice. Obviously, maybe being a bitch does get you further on. But anyway, why do I do the podcast? Um, so I used to find myself in situations I like to talk to people, as we've, as you've gathered. Um, so you know, like sometimes you'll get, you get it a lot on social media. You think you know someone, and strangely enough, there was a post in a, in a tiling group that I'm in the other day where it was a really strange post. Actually, some guy just posted, like, uh, "Does anybody else fucking despise people in this group, like, for no particular reason?" <laughs> and I'm like, "What a weird post." So he's basically yeah. saying I've got an irrational hatred of people that I don't even know. Yeah. And he was like, I have, but I won't say his name. And I'm like, what a stupid post. But but then most people underneath were saying, why have you, why have you posted that? You're just an attention seeker, whatever. But some people were actually answering him seriously, saying, yeah, I don't like this person that's sanctimonious. I don't like this person because they're a knobhead. And I'm like, you don't know any of them. You've, ne- no, you've probably right. never spoken mm. to him. So th- They're probably really nice people. You know? <laughs> well, you'll probably speak to him and say, oh, do you know what? I thought I thought he was like that because of this, but actually he's had a serious yeah, illness. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. You don't know him. So it's why just one thing, one trigger, isn't it? It's an irrational hatred for nothing. Yeah. Uh, nothing. Uh, over one little thing. Yeah. Is I where it'll be. Is that people will be listening to up. this podcast now thinking you might pair wankers, think they're great. I think, <laughs> think they're fucking brilliant because they're talking on a podcast, but... So yeah, I like talking to people for that reason. Yeah. Even if we end up not clicking, because then I can respect them and their experience, and that's the reason they are the way they are. So I used to find myself at work, talking to people, and and in work you would have meetings, and I was at that level that was like, not top, not board level, but not uh, lower down, so I was like in the middle somewhere. So I was finding myself in meetings with CEOs, bosses whatever and they were always the same type of person and this is why i kind of knew i'm never going to get to that level because i'm not that type of person they're always like in out do this do that i'm busy i'm fucking off see you later get it done that type of person Mm. and i would they were all i would speak to them like or over a coffee or if we went on for a beer on a trip out somewhere and they weren't really like that they were just playing the game yeah, yeah, yeah. appearing busy I'm really busy I've got to go I don't want any responsibility blame someone else that kind yeah. of fucking playing the game <laughs> but then I would get to know him and I've, I've I've repeated it before on the podcast there was one particular guy he was I think he's in his 60s or 70s very experienced still working and he dropped uh, to me that he was in a band in the 60s and they got on the charts and that's all I got out of him because it was like kind of, uh, I think we were having a beer or something. And there was other shit going on. And I really wanted to ask him about it to say, what were they called? What was the song? I'll look it up. Yeah. I'll download it. I'll read about you. But I never got the opportunity to ask him. So then when I was made redundant, I'd started my own business and I was in all these different groups, trade groups, trying to promote the products. 
And I got, I've literally got thousands of fucking tradesmen in my phone now. Thousands and thousands and thousands. And because I started the business so small, I think I've probably spoken to everybody that's ever used my product at yeah. length, either by chat or actually speaking to them. So I get to know people and people like to talk. They like to tell you stuff like uh, whether you agree with them or not. Sometimes you agree, sometimes you don't. And it, I've always been into podcasts. I was like, actually, what if? Because I've just had a one hour phone call with that guy about fucking the fact that I used to do drugs or whatever. Mm. And now he's a Tyler and we can relate to each other or whatever. I could have recorded that phone call and just released yeah. it as a podcast. Put it out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because okay. I think other tradesmen would like to listen. And you're not, what I really don't want to do is preach to, mm. the, and it's fine. There's podcasts that exist that give advice. This is how you make money. This is how you do your job. This is what you should be doing. This is how you get custom. I'll never do that. If somebody picks up that kind of um, knowledge second hand because the person talking is giving their experience and the person who's listening can relate and say, fucking hell, that's a good idea. I'll do that. That's fine. That's great because you're talking to someone. That's their experience. But I'll never sit and preach. Uh, it's, so yeah, really, it, it was for tradesmen, really, because I genuinely yeah. think this, and people don't believe me. I'm not a tradesman. I genuinely think that tradesmen and tradeswomen in this country are undervalued. And you see them arguing with each other in groups. I'm like, why the fuck do tradesmen slag each other off? I'm all, and I'll say it to the face when I see them that like, why are you slagging each other off? You need to be helping each other. Yeah. The reason yep. you're undervalued and underpaid, you're all fucking competing with each other when you don't need to because there's enough work to go around. If mm. you help each other out, it'll be much better. So you're you know what- arguing about my day rates, this, you should be paying yeah, this, yeah, yeah. that for fuck's sake. You're probably underpaid, all of you, mm. but you'll always be underpaid because you're always fucking arguing with each other about mm. who's best, who's this, who, oh, he thinks he's great because he gets four. I'm like, no. He doesn't think he's great. You don't know him. He's not thinking anything. He's just giving you some information and you're assuming he thinks he's fucking great. Ring him <laughs> and speak to yeah. him. It's like, fuck. <clears throat> but that, so that's the reason really. For, so if tradesmen can uh, listen and relate somehow, then great. And I think they can. And a lot of people have got a story to tell. Like Even the most normal person in the world has probably got a really great story. Most people have. Got- Definitely. And do you know what? You're right. On the TikTok, uh, I think I've put a few on about work. And one of them got quite a lot of views on it. And uh, I was getting, uh, during lockdown, uh, people YouTube it. Now they can do it themselves. Uh, your day rate's too high. Yeah. Your day rate, your day rate's too high. You, yeah. you want too much. You're greedy. You're greedy. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'll be honest with you. I charge, uh, just for instance, I was, uh, I've was i just finished rendering a wall yesterday. And it's only a little garden wall. Uh, not garden, like on the uh, road. It comes out onto the road on this old uh, Victorian house. So we've done that. Uh, finished it yesterday. Uh, but uh, the previous Friday, he needed some uh, pipe work altered, uh, altered in his bathroom so they could continue with the bathroom. And uh, he, uh, he uh, the guy who was meant to go and do it sort of let him down. And I went, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll come and do it. Cause he's a lovely fella. Lives out in uh, Greece. Really nice guy. And uh, he's uh, handing the house over to the estate agents, renting it uh, on the 11th of uh, next month. I'm going back to Greece to continue his life. He ca- he said, because uh, he went over there for a bit, come back. He had a place in London. And he went, I was staying there for a bit. And uh, I realised I couldn't afford to live in England anymore compared to what I was, the value, what I was getting, you know, back out in Greece. So he said, <coughs> I sold it, bought this place. I've got a few quid, going to do it up. Got a few quid to go back to Greece for. I'm all right. Do you know what I mean? So I went there, done uh, all of the pipe work for him. It was an actual ball ache of a job, actually, if I have to be honest. It was, like, unbelievable, like, hard to do. Uh, I used to be a plumber years ago, so I sort of can't, and I kind of know what I'm doing with it. So I sorted all that out for him, and he went, how much do you want for it? And I fitted a toilet as well and a shower tray while I was there. And he went, how much do you want for it? I went, just give us 150 quid. So uh, people going, you're too expensive, He's it, it just drives me mad. My normal day rate <clears throat> for plastering is between two and two fifty a day. Yeah. So I don't think that is expensive. No. For thirty years' knowledge. No, and it, 
I actually think that's cheap. It is, but where the area we live in, it's not. I don't know. Sometimes, if I'm rendering, I'll creep it up a little bit or something like that. But yeah. just for a day rate, it for depends. A build up, this is the thing. Two fifty. It depends. It always depends. That's the answer to everything. There isn't. Yeah. There isn't a rate. No, it's not. It depends on the job, doesn't it? It what depends on the person, the business, yeah. VAT, or the registered fucking mm. the job itself, the experience that you bring to it. Is it apprentice? Does he have an apprentice? Is he brand new? Is he doing it for his own? It's like it always depends. And yeah, honestly, mate, I, I've I've said it before. And people think I'm full of shit or whatever. A good tradesman in any trade is a fucking artist. Yeah, I genuinely think. Which well, is in the making. Yeah, in and another the life, thing. they could have done art. That's any trade. Because mm. what they're doing is, and I'm talking tilers, joiners, electricians, anything, plasterers, because yeah. what you're doing on the fly, without even realising, and loads of tradesmen will say, yeah, I'm thick, I never did well at school. I'm like, you're not thick. A lot of tradesmen are the same. They didn't, they didn't do well academically because they just couldn't fit in academically. They're not mm. thick. They're, they're intelligent in other ways. But what they're doing on the fly is art, maths, fucking... The whole lot, yeah, yeah all put together. Without thinking about it. <clears throat> and then you're producing... Yeah. I'm talking about good tradesmen here, by the way, because I've got a very different opinion of bad tradesmen. But let's say a good plasterer. You're talking, you're making the walls flat. Sounds easy, should be easy. It isn't. It fucking no. isn't. It's and, years in the making. Yeah. And if you think you can do it yourself... You probably can in mm. a training centre with a perfectly flat wall. Yeah. No, no issues arise. But then on site, you come up against shit. Problems all the time, yeah. yeah. How do we... F but the good guy will be like, it's not a problem, I'll fix it as I go. Easy. Yeah, you'll get over it. There's ways around that, them. And that's what you're paying for. Yeah, his and, knowledge. You're right, yeah. exactly that. And, and and those, that you person. can undervalue yourself sometimes. I say it a lot to a lot of tradesmen, you're undervaluing yourself. <clears throat> And then you've got the thing, with the, I, this is something I don't understand that I need to ask someone who's actually done it to. I think, I've got in my head, never, I've, I haven't fleshed it out enough to think about it, but I'll just talk out loud. So when, I can't remember his name, but he was talking on TikTok the other day about going VAT registered. He was a joiner, Adam, mm. Adam Wilson, maybe. And he, he was basically saying, don't do it. And I was like, oh no, because what in my head. I think, was that on TikTok? I think yeah. I watched that one. Yeah, yeah. I see it. I know exactly what you're talking about. The, the way I see that in my head then is he's going to limit himself to how much he earns a year now. Mm. So because he doesn't want to be VAT registered anymore because he sees it as a pain in the arse. So he's limiting himself, obviously, unless he does dodgy cash deals or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Which, like, well, do you know what? Take that, that out that the equation. Really exist. Cash don't exist anymore in the building trade. Not like it used to. Yeah. I, I, Ten years ago, I could have done everything in cash. Now, everything's bank transfer. Yeah. I very rarely see cash, and people don't believe me when I say it. I very rarely see cash. Yeah. If it's a little job for a I pensioner, like you plaster the ceiling or something like that, someone old they might go as hey, thank you. Here's, here's the money at the end of the job. Yeah. But it's not what people think in the building trade anymore. Yeah. And the construction trade, everything is above board, and it goes through the books. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was sitting there watching that guy. He's basically saying, "I want to earn less." I'm yeah, like, mate. What a sad fucking way to be. Because he can do you know earn what, more, though? but he doesn't want to. With VAT, it does hold you back because you've got to charge that customer then VAT yeah. and you're outpricing yourself. Even yeah. if you're a reasonable price tradesman, mm -hmm. another 20% on it, you're not going to get that work. And this is yeah. the, the transition in between being a big company and building up. Uh, they, they don't want you to do it, the government. This is the problem. They yeah. don't want you to. And that's well, why that fresh yeah. set there. That was my thought, is, is that designed... Yeah to stop yeah. people you're growing yeah I don't know it might not be it just might be something that people genuinely struggle with I, th I think it's a it's a bit of like when you're small enough to be to be under the threshold mm. that's fine but when you're just a little bit over it it doesn't really do anything for you you have to be a f I don't know I'm not you're a tradesman not over it yeah you have to but, be a lot over it yeah, I don't know I'm not a tradesman so I don't know I registered for mm. VAT when I was doing zero a year I, when I was selling two hundred pounds worth of stuff a year, because selling stuff online to me, it's just more professional to be do everything kosher, VAT, mm. register for it properly, be be 
um, clear with the customer that this is the price including VAT. And so yeah, it's I've never been I've never done it any differently, even when I was nowhere near the threshold. I think on products you can do it. People yeah, expect it's different to it? pay VAT on a product, yeah. but they, with a tradesman, it's completely different. Yeah, it completely definitely is different, different because yeah. you're out pricing yourself. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, I, I, I'd like to maybe get that guy on to explain because he might have more detail of what his yeah, issues look him, were. Yeah, look him up. That, do you know what? I'd listen to that. Yeah. I'd be interested to find out because that's an interesting to break that barrier. I've never been VAT registered. I've always and never really earned that much. I, you know, because I don't really, I don't need to earn that much to survive. Yeah. And when I was younger, I was more hungry. I'm 51 now. And uh, I see my life. I, I mean, I used to work seven days a week because I didn't want to let anybody down. Yeah. And now I have my daughter at the weekends, every weekend I have. Uh, and do you know what? I like my life the way it is. Four yeah. day week, okay for me. Yeah. And uh, you've got time and you can't buy back time. When you get older, you realize it. When you're younger, you're chasing the money all the time. But when you get that little bit older, you think, hold up, time's more important. Yeah. What's that money going to buy me? Any possession you buy now in a year's time, I would say you, you probably wouldn't even be looking at it. Yeah. Do you know Correct. what I mean? Why do you want that flash car? Why do you want that? Because it doesn't improve your life. A car is a car and it gets to be where you need to go. Mm-hmm. Why do you need a £50,000 one? Yeah, some people, but when I was younger, that is what I looked at. Now yeah. I'm more settled in my life and a bit older. I look and I think I don't need that. No, no. Some people do need that though. That usually they're the kind of people that go into sales because <laughs> <laughs> they they go they'll turn up in a flash car even though they're skint. Yeah, yeah. And, and the yeah, boss finance to the eyeballs. Yeah, the boss of the <laughs> the sales department mm. will be like, hmm. This guy likes to wear nice suits and his, his a watch is yeah, important to him. Yeah, nice flash car. It's the image, isn't it? It's yeah. the image so they're portraying. He's probably a good salesman because he cares a lot about money. His image. Yeah. Yep. Make so, it right. Make but it I didn't right. see it, mate. I was, I was a buyer for years. If someone turned up like that as a salesman, I'd be like, fuck this guy. <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> you know what? I always say that. If oh, you see tradesmen, I, I ran my area. There's one guy who drives around in his... Uh, massive full truck must have cost about 30 40 grand all sign written up if he pulled up outside my place to do a job i'd be thinking shit i'm in trouble here <laughs> i'd rather have someone pull up in a five-year-old van to price my work because they're, they're <laughs> genuine and reasonable do you know what i mean yeah. how can he afford that i'm pay- yeah. i'm gonna be paying for that yeah flash. That, you know that's a massive drawback i think for, for flash. Both, as far as i'm concerned with a, a if you get a tradesman pull up in something really flashy, you, that is a, a alarm bells for me straight away. Yeah, that that is actually another thing with um, not just tradesmen, but a lot of people that they'll project as if they're doing a lot better than they are. Yeah, and to be honest, a lot of people will believe it and assume it. Shit, he must mm. be doing really well. Yeah, and they're not, and that's where a lot of the like irrational fucking hatred comes from because they'd be like, "Look at this dickhead! How's he got so much money?" And you're like, "Probably hasn't." Some of some of them have, and some of them are doing well, but more often than not, they haven't. Yeah, it's like the ones who really have got the money generally don't show off. Generally, no, that's right. Do you know what? You're right. You look at multi-millionaires and billionaires, and they walk around in you, you would never know. And yeah. then you get the other side of it where they're flashy. And... I don't know. Some of them do. Look at footballers and stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah, do. But, no, do you know what? I think that's accepted. That's what they, <laughs> they have to do. They have to have the Ferrari pulling up into the training ground yeah. when the photos are taken. It's all part of the image. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so we got to that. So looking through your TikToks, right? So it's harder for me to find um, guests because it's just harder to find people who are doing what you're doing. And I get, mm. I do get messages from people saying... <clears throat> can I be on the podcast? And I never say no, so I'll go and look at their stuff. And they're like, they've already, they're already into the game of social media. So they're yeah. like, do this, do that. I'm selling this, do this. I'll tell you. And I'm like, I don't want you on the podcast. I just want genuine people to tell yeah, me the just story. Normal, yeah. So I made the decision a while ago to like, do you know what? I'm only going to do a podcast when people are available who i want to speak to yeah and it might be once a month and it might be twice a week or whenever it is so that's it that's the reason we are where we are and there's been a big gap and people do 
uh, like I say, I really appreciate it. People message me and say, have you quit? Is there not a podcast anymore? And I'm like, no, there definitely <laughs> is. It's just I have to make money to pay the bills. The podcast yeah. doesn't make money. Whatever whatever anyone thinks, it doesn't make any fucking do, money. Do you think it would if you kept going with it and persevered with it? Do you think you would be able to make money off of it? So I don't, honestly don't understand how any of it works, to be honest with you. I think it possibly could, but I think what the, the, the thing that people fall for is there's millions of podcasts, right? And you've got, so the top people, so everybody knows who Joe Rogan is. Yeah. He, so Joe Rogan's number one podcast, right? He's a multimillionaire. He's probably a fucking billionaire at this stage. He's got hundreds of millions of pounds in the bank. The number two podcast is nowhere fucking near him. Yeah. He's so far ahead. The divide. It's not even worth trying to keep up with him, even if you're number two. Mm. But then even number two, say the top ten in the world, even the top ten just in the UK, the rest, so the, the other 90% or the other 99%, you, you, it's fuck all in comparison so I don't think the majority of podcasts do make money you're getting a lot of um, BBC maybe Sky Channel 4 or whoever they're releasing podcasts now mm. but they're not independent so they're paying people like Peter Crouch or whoever he's probably getting paid well by the BBC because they're just after listeners or eyeballs or however they release yeah. it so the podcast itself isn't necessarily making money. It's a lost leader. Yeah. Possibly mm. it gets listeners and it would make money if it wasn't the BBC, but I don't know. But I think, no, the majority of normal ones like me don't make money. And I've always said the goal is if it could ever pay for itself. Yeah, that'd be, yeah. Brilliant. That'd be good. Because then it's yeah, paying yeah. for itself. So I can like equipment and time and things mm. like that. And then one day, if, if it ever paid me a salary, fuck me that'd be like amazing like yeah, yeah. wow but that's so far away it's untrue i mean even the top ones will tell you i mean it's different now because they kind of because the money that the the non-independent ones put behind them they get promoted and they're popular very quickly but the, generally speaking at the old model of a podcast even the top ones who get millions or hundreds of thousands of yeah. listeners and get adverts and stuff they did nothing for maybe 50 or 100 episodes. Yeah. Generally speaking, some of them might have been outliers and might have done well straight away. But generally speaking, until they'd done 50 or 100 or uh, two years doing it, nothing mm. happened. They're just doing it for the for the passion. Yeah. It's a bit like getting back to the TikTok thing. Uh, yeah, I think it was... Uh, I can't remember who said it. It was an a influencer. And he said... but. He said, guys who are on TikTok at the minute, yeah, he said, what you've got to do is make three videos a day for 18 months. And he said, you can't give up. You can't stop doing it. And that's the thing. You've got to keep pushing it. Yeah. And then people uh, are aware to you. I mean, I'm getting stitched. They're taking my content now, people. I'm putting it in their videos. Yeah. So what does that say? Yeah. I think... I, I'm getting recognized, yeah. really, on with, TikTok. With TikTok, I always beg people, because I, I speak to people like you, and it... It's wrong, really, because I'm wrong. There is a way of doing well on TikTok, and there, and there is a formula, and there's an algorithm that, you, that will reward you for following the formula. But I would say to people, please just stay the same. Try and stay genuine, and like yeah. keep that vulnerability or whatever. I've that, never, that, I've never that take anybody into it. content and put it in mind. I've never yeah. have any effects. I'll never, I never have music. Occasionally, I'll do one if it's a photo or something like that, and I'll yeah. put a bit of music on it. But I, I am, it's literally just me. And yeah. I, I, I just don't know how people want to watch it. I really don't. It's like madness. Because it's genuine. It must be the same. Yeah. That, that's what's good about it. It's genuine. And what, what will happen is, and I, I, the, the three posts a day thing, I don't necessarily agree with it because it's a lot of pressure to do that. And how do you come up with stuff like that all the time? But on the flip side of it, if you throw enough out there, yeah, something eventually that you don't even think was anything will get picked up for whatever reason and go viral, either because it's someone's used it as a, a sticker or a reply. Yeah, I'll share it. Yeah, for someone else. And then that's it. You're you're away. You get you yeah. getting thousands of followers a day. Mm. And I'm talking as a non-expert. I haven't got a fucking clue. I only I only use TikTok to post stuff about grout, and I know it's it's very 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 niche. <laughs> but it's very just very niche. Yeah, it's it's a place for me to park videos. That's it. Yeah. So if anyone ever asks. 
I've got a, li- can, a library. Direct there. Yeah. Yeah. Direct them to uh, and it. that's yeah, it, actually, really. Yeah. It's a bit like Facebook. No, I don't really use it, but I use it for photo storage. <laughs> yeah, it's just I'll it's put a my good photos place. on there. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. good place. So I like your post because you'll talk about things like fucking what was one uh, <laughs> uh, bottles on bottle plastic bottle lids. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like that though because I, I me it annoys the life out of me. But me being me, right? That's the kind of thing where I'm like, why have they done that? I'll mm-hmm. research that. Do you know why it is? Go on. So it's an EU thing. Right. And generally speaking, I think the EU has some good directives. Generally yeah, speaking, yeah. for our safety and pollution. And generally speaking, they do a lot of good stuff, the EU does. But we've got like that relationship with the EU where we're like, fuck the EU, because whatever. But I think, generally speaking, they do have a lot of good ideas. The one was the charges with phones and things like that. They've got people. Yeah, make it a universal one. Yeah. It is a good idea. I know what you're saying. GDPR, yeah, that was a good idea. That's been fucked up a bit, but the 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 the, the general uh, idea of it was a good idea to stop people being fucking bombarded with emails and spied on and stuff like that. So this yeah. one, the bottle lids, it's a good idea. But if you t- if you take it in isolation, it's like ridiculous. Because well, do you know what someone mentioned to me uh, about the uh, cans? Remember, you, how old are you? I don't even know. But you, I don't 42. think you remember the old the uh, when you opened just the can, about yeah yeah ring, yeah yeah the lid pulls off, <clears throat> and you can make a little thing out of it. If you broke it off, you yeah. can make a little cat bowl out of it and shoot yeah, it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we used to do it when we was kids, and uh, and uh, they said, "Well, you know, look at cans now." And but I'm thinking to myself, I should have replied with video comment on it. You couldn't put that ring pull back on that can. So I agree. The cans now are brilliant because you're not you're not having that waste coming off, which used to get discarded. Kids used to make frisbees out of it yeah. and flick it and stuff like that. So I do. I think it's different to cans. Saying. It's different. Uh, so so the reason you, you for know, it is you can put a lid back on a bottle. Yeah. So the reason for the for the lid thing, and it it kind of makes sense, but then you can quickly make it not make sense if you take it in isolation. So in isolation, the reason for it is it's literally littering. They want to make sure that more plastic gets to recycling centres. That's it, really. Yeah. And they think that lids might not get put back on the bottle and they might get separated and put into the normal um, trash, whatever. Right. But it's part of a bigger thing. So there's a lot of directives to do with recycling. That's just part of it that we're noticing because we see bottles. But the the mad thing about it is the bottle goes with the lid now to the recycling centre. But the two different plastics, the bottle is very easy to recycle. So that's like usually clear plastic, which is great because it can go. It's a type of plastic that's easy to recycle, and it's not got a color. Yeah. If a if a plastic got a color, it's harder to recycle because if it's blue or black or whatever, it can only ever really be that color again. So they have to right. separate it and whatever. If it's white or clear, then you're laughing. You can do whatever you want with it. But the lid itself. It's a different type of plastic, and it doesn't usually get recycled. <laughs> so they're sending it with the bottle to the recycling centre. So the whoever's manually taking the lids off at the recycling centre has to take it off there to put it in the bin. <laughs> so it's like, what the fuck? So it's like something like so less than ten percent of all plastics get recycled. So le- even when they go to the recycling centre, less than ten percent of that gets recycled. Yeah, so do you know what? It's, uh, it's a good I, I, idea, I, though, on the face of it. They're ha- trying to help. That's the mm. theory. Well, why don't they go back to glass bottles then? Like the Corona. When I was a kid growing up, you had a glass bottle. Uh, you had a crate. You paid a proportion of the money was the bottle. Mm. It went back. It got reused. Same as the milk bottles. Yeah, yeah they might they, one day. They worried about plastic straws. How yeah. many COVID tests have gone into landfill? And been littered, and how, do you know what I mean? It just doesn't. Nothing makes sense anymore, does the it? Straws it down, the straws thing was The straws thing was crackers. Oh, madness! Absolutely madness. But they might end up with glass bottles again at this rate. Yeah, they might. And that, that's the way forward. It's re- recycling at its finest. Yeah, absolute finest. Yeah, it's you know milk bottles. Yeah, don't, you don't need it in plastic. They should be banned. You should have glass bottles, and you should take them back. <laughs> that actually. The, I, I think I saw something where a company, so a startup, they were a startup, like got all this funding yeah. and loads of money. And it was basically that, the milkman. 
that yeah. what, that's what it was. But they just tarted it all up to make it look like a fancy new business, like. <laughs> <laughs> rebranded it it's yeah. exactly the same yeah, that's what it is it's the, the milkman the machines in the supermarkets what they they brought out about seven or eight years ago where you'd buy your conditioner you'd keep the bottle you'd take it back you put it in there and refill it with the conditioner so you've always got that one plastic bottle where yeah. did they go where did they disappear to yeah you yeah. know it's like they want you to do it but they don't want you to do it the yeah. government well it's like be seen to be doing the right thing but don't impact people's profit too much so and it's a lot of like, a lot to do with it it is a, yeah. probably a lot of it is profit and um, but what they're yeah. making and do you know what if you we had this conversation the other day if you cut the plastic manufacturers out of it there's jobs losses and i think it, it's a balance isn't it they've got to find a balance which you know wow. they've you know it's like the plastic bags in the supermarket you've got to buy them there you pay for them i'll throw them in the bin i buy i, I don't take a bag to supermarket i've got, a, so theory still about, I've got a theory about the plastic bags as well go on so when they, when they started charging with pla- for plastic bags mm. i immediately said so i was a buyer at the time bear in mind i immediately yeah. said it won't be long before they take advantage of that because every fucker needs plastic bags and i was right because now they they were 5p it's just like yeah, a, that's right. They a was, yeah. Like a, what are they twenty four p now, aren't they, or something? Well, I think 25, 35, 40, whatever they cost. Because now yeah. they say you can use this bag again, but nobody fucking does. Some people do, <laughs> but the vast majority. Yeah, of people you do some, forget. some, but yeah, you go to the supermarket. Vast majority of people are buying bags again. They're all oh, yeah, definitely. So I was saying like that product to the commercial department of that store is going to become the top seller, guaranteed. And I guarantee oh, it is. That about. somewhere yeah. there's a, a buyer or a commercial manager showing his boss that the top seller this week was 35p bags and the profit margin on 35p bags is fucking 34p. I can almost guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, you were hungry. They're making a killing. He's gone. You're back. You yeah. cut out that, mate. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but yeah. No, I just plugged, I just plugged the laptop in. It was getting a bit low on battery. Yeah, no worries. So yeah, that, that was uh, not a conspiracy theory. I think I'm fucking right. They're profiting off the the environmental. So all same as a lot of things. It all starts off with all the good intentions. Yeah. And then it quickly. And then someone's it, making money out of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. It's exactly the same. For you made a post about it. You know the St George's Cross having yeah. the pink and the purple. So I, I have a view on this. And it's, it's a, I don't like it. Same as a lot of people don't like it, but mm. my view's a little bit different on it. Because, so a lot of people are saying, don't mess with the flag or whatever. And I agree with that. Why? Why would you mess with history or whatever? But then the yeah. argument is, well, we've done it before and we've messed with flags <laughs> before. And I'm like, well, mm. before, even a few years ago, it wasn't such a symbol as it is now. So those no, colours right. fucking mean something now. And yeah, everybody yeah. knows they do. So my theory on it is that Nike, and it goes back to the thing again with all the, there's a thing called the SG, um, Environment Social Governance or something like that. And it was created a long time ago to get companies to say, right, we'll give you an ESG score, which means you're good at saving their environment or um, inclusion, all these good things that are fucking on the mm. face of it, great. All the best intentions in the world. And I think what's happened is Nike are very into that. If you look at Nike recently, they're very into well, like. If you, if you look at Nike, uh, they used Dylan Mulvaney, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. Uh, to model a sports bra. Yeah. So, and uh, you look what happened to Bad Light. I think yeah. people, well, they didn't tolerate it in America, did they? Well, they're the, different to us. My opinion of it is like, great, but be open about it, do it. Do everything. Do fucking stuff for men who are men, men's men. Nothing wrong with that. Do stuff for men who aren't men's men. Do stuff for gays. Do stuff. But you cannot label everybody with the same thing. Don't don't try and. And I think what happened, what what tends what tended to happen is, and especially Budweiser, they alienated the main market, their main customers. Men was American men. So the Nike thing. This is all, uh, fuck me, I'm so full of shit, it's unreal, but this is my theory, right? <laughs> so Nike is so into ESG 
that they'll do ev- anything possible to get this good score because it's become an important thing for your share price. So it's right. it's probably come from the top. So to, to get a good ESG score, they've probably got a very diverse board. Great, whatever. And from there, it's been come down, make sure we get a good ESG score for sports or whatever. And from there, it gets passed down and each instruction and it's culminated in they've met they've they've butted with the fa who are also Mm. very into inclusion and whatever which is great nothing fucking wrong with it no one's saying there is but what's what's happened is that they've got to the position now where they've made the men's shirts and i guarantee you this is my this is why i've got an issue with it right don't have an issue with the fact that they did it so what do it but Mm. the fact that I think they've lied about it because do you really think that the designers at Nike don't understand what each colour they put on a garment is? They will have a fucking meeting for two hours with coffee. Oh, that's right. Well, to discuss, longer than that. Yeah, to yeah. discuss which pink. And yeah. Because the, the professionals, they know exactly what that colour is, what it's called, what it represents. So it's mm. not an accident that they did that. But what what all my point is, why don't you just say that's why you did it? Some people will like yeah. it and some people won't. And the reason I think they lied about it is because I think when it when they were released it was probably too late by then they were like, Oh fuck, people actually don't like it when we do stuff like this, so let's just say it's a playful design. Great, nice one, let's do that. So then it was released as playful interpretation of the St. George's Cross but it wasn't those colours mean something those designers are fucking professional they know what yeah, they're doing I agree and then, a few, and then a few days later they come out with a different excuse it's an homage to the 66 training kit so that, at mm. that point I know the line because it isn't no. it, that's just obviously it's not it's nothing like I mean, the 66 it, training England kit England kit's not always had his, uh, a flag on it I mean, I'm you not look bothered. at the, the yeah, my mate, I'm not even bothered. That no. do it or don't do it. No, tell the, yeah, tell but, the truth about it. I'm tell us why you did it. Yeah. Because so, yeah, then, tell us why. Because then people who don't like that can say, "Well, fuck it, then I'm not buying that." Yeah. But, yeah. but what people are saying is, you're forcing all of this bullshit on people who don't want it. Lots of people do want it. Great, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. But it, now they've lied about it. That's like. That's my disappointment in it, that you've obviously yeah. lied about you know it. What? That you, didn't you, happen you, by accident. Do you know what? You should do some TikToks. Uh, because do you know what? Listening <laughs> to you, I would follow you. If you was on TikTok, I would follow you. What you just said there, if you could put that in a TikTok, you, you would get thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands what? of people agreeing oh. with you. Because you've you've just made sense of it. Yeah, I'm also... I don't... I, it, it would be controversial as well, though, and I don't really want that. I don't really want to create art. Because I'm... Honest, believe it or not, after everything I've just said, I'm I'm pretty fucking open to whatever anybody wants to do. Do whatever you want. Yeah. But no, that's right. I, I do yeah, have an I issue agree. with. But don't make, don't don't tell me I've things. got to do it. It's yeah, one exactly, of them. Exactly. Yeah, do what you want. Don't tell me I've got to do it. Yeah. And and even do it. Tell and and force it on people, but don't lie about it. Yeah, yeah. So they'd yeah. be like, they they just bullshit. I could say. I'm going to t- tick tock that later. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could say. I could say a lot about a lot of things, mate, with regards sport. Mm. And it's the fact that it's it's pure lies. They'll say. So it's really difficult to talk about because I don't want to start sounding like a fucking <clears throat> moaning bloke because that's what I am basically. I'd, I'd have to sit here with someone who's more a woman or someone who is gay or whatever to, to let them talk about yeah. it but it's the fact that it, it's the fact there is facts related to these things and it, the facts are for example that particular sport doesn't make any money it's been forced into the world by sponsors who want a good ESG score like Nike whoever whoever and whatever but don't fucking lie about it just say this mm. is what it is, and because these are the facts, so just say that. But I'm not like 
I hate it. We shouldn't be doing women's football. I'm not like that. Great, do it. We do women's tennis. It's fucking great. I'll watch it. Mm. Women's football. I'm sh- I, I don't actually watch it, but not for any other reason. I, I don't think it's a great standard. That's just my honest truth. That my, why would I watch it? But great. And if in 15, well, 20 at, years, at least, it might, it might be fucking can, brilliant. At least but, the women can win the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're great. Honestly, yeah. I have no issues with it, but it's the, it's the way it's presented to us. It's like, there's something not honest about all this. Mm. And it's like, all right, whatever. But yeah. So that's why I wouldn't do TikToks because even what I've just said is probably going to make me some enemies. Yeah, it's but just facts what, and it's, honest opinion. That's it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but do you know what? It's not enemies. It's a debate. I I see TikTok as a debate. Yeah, and if I'm wrong, uh, a guy actually we were talking about the flag uh, a few years ago. They changed the Brazil kit, the, the color flag color on that, Nike. And uh, I've replied to him. I'm going to have a little research of it. But if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. Because <clears throat> it was the, the fact that no other country's flag would be changed other than ours. But he's yeah. saying, hold up a minute. So it's more of a debate, I see, TikTok. You do get some haters on there. But I'll just drop my love art. <laughs> I don't move care on. that they've changed the flag. Well, I, kind of, I do no, actually. That, I do actually. You know what? That, yeah, I do. It, but, I, I do to a certain extent. But I think the stadiums are going to be full, full of George Crosses anyway. There'll be the flags there. There'll be the old shirts. Yeah. It, you know, I think Nike really have made a massive mistake. Massive, yeah. huge mistake. It's the fact that they lied that. about it after that argument yeah. of we've changed things in the past and Brazil did it didn't mean what it meant means now in the past. It it's mm. clear why they did it, which is and like I say, fucking great. But don't lie about it. Yeah, yeah. You, no, some people, right. not everybody likes everything. But if you were honest and said we did it because these colours mean this or what, it's clear why they did it. It's fucking. Mm. The designers don't make mistakes. And if you look at the away shirt, I think that's got it in as well. Right. But they'll say they've come up with these other reasons, which is like... Yeah, right. you know, yeah, you just, yeah. Just yeah, be I know honest about it. Just be honest about yeah. it. And whenever they change things in the past, I mean, let's say 10 or 15 years ago, you could walk around in a designer, whatever, shirt, T-shirt, whatever, rainbow colours, and it would just be one of those ugly, ironic designer designs like it's ugly but smart because i'm i like designer stuff now if you wore a rainbow thing it would mean it would be 100 percent. most people would think it meant something else yeah because that's the way it is now mm. so by bringing up things that happened in the past it's not the same comparison but what they've turned it into and this is why i always lose arguments because i sit in the middle and then both sides hate me they've turned it into a <laughs> uh, this or that so they've turned mm. it into, if you don't like it, you must be a Neanderthal fucking flag right, shagger. Yeah. And if you do yeah. like it, you're... you're to- yeah. And it's it's not. I'm sitting in the middle trying you're to think... You're not covering a narrative. Why did, and then you, why did yeah. they do it? Why did they do it? That's that's all I'm like. What, what's the reason? And it might... They might eventually say, because there's Nike d- d- designers do not do things like that by accident. They'll sit and discuss a colour for fucking weeks. Oh, there'd, be, there'd have been board meetings on it. Yeah. <laughs> and the FA will, are the same. They would have been in on it. Oh, yeah, 100%. And the bullshit. So, that, yeah, the, let, the, let. The, the biggest thing that made me um, annoyed was when they said it was to do with the 66 training kit, because it clearly fucking isn't. No. It just isn't. So, yeah. Um, mate, do you mind? Um, I've just had a message off someone. It'll take me about five minutes to deal with this thing, and then that's right. And no then I'll come, I need a wee anyway. I'll come back and we'll go through your story then. Yeah, definitely. That all right? So I'll press pause. Right, cool. You won't see Speaking anything. Pause, but I'll pause it here. All right, mate. Nice. Nice one. Ta ta. You're back in the room. We're back. I get um, my business mates. It's like. Uh, I, I do everything myself. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, website, shipping, logistics, sales, warehouse, pick, pack, ship, everything. You do the whole lot. Yeah. Well, do you know what? I think when you are starting business and you're trying to grow, you've got to do that. You've got to do every job. Hopefully for you one day, you'll, you'll be able to get someone else and say, can you do that? But that's just how life is. Yeah. When you sort of start out. 
I'd love that, mate. That's what that's a. Uh, I only have two goals in life. Mm. One of them is to make sure my kids don't have to do same as what I did. That's yeah. it, really. I'm living yeah, to yeah. make make their life better. Yeah. Yeah, but the other one is to, if possible, employ people, give them a good salary for like more than mm. what they fucking deserve, not just the, the bare minimum. Yeah, I won't necessarily make millions and millions, but giving other people an opportunity to come from the same kind of place where I came from to say, yeah. if you work hard, you get paid well. And it's like, because I don't think most most big companies don't do that. They're just like, we've got 20,000 jobs or whatever. You're just a number. Yeah, yeah, you're just a number. Yeah. And that's the beauty of a small business when you think about it. And uh, as growing up, my uncle had uh, uh, video wholesalers and it was the biggest independent video wholesalers in the country. So it wasn't a small operation. It was massive. And it was a family of people. Yeah. And everybody was friends. And everybody's still in touch. He obviously shut it years ago. I remember sitting there with him once. And he went, he went listen to this. He said, soon, this, I'm going back some years. He went, soon, you won't have to go and rent a video or a DVD. Well, it would be DVD back then. You won't have to rent a DVD. It will be broadcast to your television. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> he went, yeah, it's happening. Because he used to deal with Love Film. Yeah. Uh, was it Love Film? It was. Yeah, yeah. That's Netflix. And, uh, I used to go up to Peter in Peterborough. Yeah. And I used to do a delivery for him once yeah. a week up to Love Film with thousands and thousands and thousands of DVDs. Yeah. And I'd collect thousands and bring them back. Yeah. So he had both bites of the cherry on it. Yeah, yeah. So he was buying them back and then selling them again after, yeah. you know, because when it's a new release, you might need a hundred copies of it. Well, yeah. then it was thousands of copies. Yeah. And uh, two weeks later, everybody's watched it. Yeah. He's gotten back. He's now he's retailing them. Yeah. So he, he was a multi, multi, multi millionaire out of it. And he said really? that to me. I was sitting at his dining room table in his house. He went, they're going to beam it in. So it ended, but all the people in that company still talk to each other and they're still friends. It must have been 50 employees. They're the best businesses, mate. I, I, always, best. I prefer right. dealing with independents. Yeah, 100% right. It's, you get that personal touch, they know your name. Well, they can, I'll, all, I'll they can what, also make a decision. Story. I'll, t- I'll tell you a quick story about it. I was out in, where was we? I was out in Spain somewhere. This is going back some years. And uh, we was uh, on this harbour. And I-, I needed cigarettes. That's back, well, I smoke now, but it's back when I used to smoke years ago. And uh, I said, where, how can, where can we get cigarettes from? And I went across, across the harbour. And there was like restaurants and pubs and stuff like that. So we started walking, for being the thickos, and we're walking the wrong way. So every time we try to get there, there's a sea. And I'm thinking, what the hell? How can this be? I don't understand it. But we're walking around the wrong way of the harbour. So we just keep hitting sea. And then I found a hotel and I asked him. And he went, oh, yeah, there's a Yates' wine bar up there. So uh, went up there. And uh, <laughs> Joe, it was the most crazy holiday ever. So we're sitting there. And this uh, coloured fella's come over. A really, really nice guy with his wife out there on holiday. And he went, he was quite busy. He went, do you want to sit with you? I went, yeah, come join in. So we were chatting away. I went, where are you from? He went, Swindon. And I went, I used to do a video round up to Swindon. And he went, I used to have a video shop. And he knew my cousin and my uncle personally <laughs> when he used to go down to Leightonstone in London to buy it. And he went, Carly. I went, that's my cousin. <laughs> Mate, we spent all week with him. Absolutely all week. And yeah, it's mad. The video mad. industry. That's gone. Oh, it's gone completely. Yeah. That's it. It's all but, digital. Yeah. It, it would have been. A, it's the same as any other industry, isn't it? Everybody knows everybody. It yeah. would have been just like, oh. But what are the odds of that, of meeting that guy by walking the wrong way around the harbour and he ate his wine bar in Spain? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and he knew my family. <laughs> personally knew him. Personally knew him. So, yeah, we spent the whole week with him. And, uh, yeah, it's lovely people. So, yeah. Nice. And that's what a family business does. Yeah. And yeah, not a corporation. Corp- like I say, corporations, they're not people. I've, like I said earlier, the, the, there's people there but the, it's mm. not human. They're it, not there. It's no, just, they don't care. It's a machine. Mm. It's a big fucking lump of money that needs to grow for what? Yeah. And the people that work, do they, they get instructed from level mm. to level down. down and do you know what? I think the worst part hill. of it, if you work at Tesco's and you walk in and you're down or your dog's died or something's happened in your life, major, no one cares. You might talk to a work colleague, but in a smaller business, when you've got 30, 40 employees, yeah. you're taken care of. Yeah. And you might, got that you might be lucky. You might have a good boss if you're mm. lucky. But we talked about this the other day, actually. It's like all these big companies that seem super efficient and like 
the share price is really good and the fucking yeah, yeah. the the news that gets uh, sp- um, fucking sp- sp- thrown up about them every quarter or every end of year report it's always the same fucking kind of quotes we did this we did that blah 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 corporate speak it's all bollocks because if you deal with those companies personally as a human being you'll only really ever have a good experience if the other human is nice as well yeah it's not the company being super efficient even the big fucking companies like apple and i was telling you about toyota wasn't like they're super efficient but Behind all that is a load of people scrambling around. Yeah, yeah, stressing. And, and it's always the nice people that you have mm. the good experience with or this person who's good yeah, at the yeah. job or whatever. So it's always people. So people worried about AI or whatever, that even the companies who are super efficient, they're not really. They seem yeah. like they are. But Smoke behind, all, behind yeah. all that efficiency is <laughs> thousands of people scrambling around or hundreds of, yeah. hundreds of little suppliers who supply them who aren't efficient. And it's like, yeah. It's it's not all as it seems, and it's always people. So, let's get on to the actual podcast after an hour and a half. Yeah, go on then. If, um, <laughs> so, if you just tell people, um, briefly explain like what you do on it as a day job and 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 where you are, and and we'll take it from there. Yeah, just really all aspects of plastering back from victorian i've done a bit of watland daub in the past and do you know what i mean over the years you just gain that experience and build it up and uh i used to enjoy it a lot more than i do now because i think it, I, I had tennis elbow for about eight months last year and worked through it and it, the agony was unbelievable it's ten, obviously tendon damage and uh but really that's the first injury i've had i've suffered with a bad back sometimes it goes nerve nerves in my back go takes a couple of days but and then there's people moaning about paying two, 200, 250 pound day rate. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? Make sense of it. We're yeah. destroying our bodies, literally destroying our bodies doing it. Yeah. What and area do you cover? Uh, I cover really an hour from where I am. Summage Wells, I'd go to Brighton. we have done a job oh, in the summer. It was the worst job I've ever done in my life in Canberra Sands. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. yeah. Canberra Sands. Right. Yeah, if you yeah. drive into the car park there. Yeah. You've got the uh, concession stands where they sell sunglasses, balls, inflatable, stuff like that. We've done the back of it. And every day we went there, the sand blew off the beach and blew up. So we had to dig the sand out literally every single day uh, to render it. And, we, yeah, we've done it. Uh, I was uh, working with another plasterer on that one, uh, Ian Ferguson, uh, Ferguson Plastering uh, Contractors. He's, he's, I've known him since I was about 15 years old. And uh, we, we, we brushed shoulders. We would just see each other every now and again on jobs and stuff like that. We'd done a big one in Bexhill uh, through the summer, and I'd done that with Ian. And that was uh, an interesting job, that one. It was the same uh, architect who designed Winston Churchill's house. It was a carbon copy of it, but a smaller house. It had big buttresses on it. Uh-huh. So, yeah, and I love jobs like that, where it's something a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. And we'd done that. Come out amazing, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was happy. But, yeah, he was a funny client as well. I'll tell you a quick story about him. He owned owned the house next door. He's had million-pound houses, over a million-pound, way over a million-pound houses. And he owned the house next door, and he was a school teacher. He was gay and lived with his boyfriend, and his wife lived in the other house. Uh, and the reason – Old school he, wife and he, boyfriend. He, yeah. The re- no, the reason uh, uh, he married is because he was a school teacher – and to be a, a master or so and progress, you had to be married back then. He's quite an a, a old guy. So you actually had to be married and be a family man uh, before they'd let you do this certain job. I can't remember exactly what oh, it was. Ridiculous. No. And uh, the lady in question, really lovely, uh, she uh, had some trouble when she was younger uh, with guys and stuff like that. And he went, look, you know, I'll look after you. You're very wealthy, man. His father used to know... Uh, who was it? Uh, who designed the TV? I can't think. The Scottish guy. It wasn't. It was a guy. It was <laughs> Graham a guy. Alexander Bell. What yeah, did he do? He was and he used to, I think he used to know him, his dad. What the fuck did and, Alexander uh, Bell do? Very, oh, I've said that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Google it now because it'll bug me. 
but yeah, it's the interesting people you meet through through working as well. It's, uh, you know, I work for multi multi millionaires and I work for old age pensioners, and I treat them the same. They're all the same to me. They're just clients. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's interesting. So some of the stories and some of the people, very interesting job to do. Yeah. Because well, you never know yeah. the walk of life you're going to be working for next. Yeah, people, mate. People are interesting. Sometimes they're They are interesting, definitely. But sometimes they're really interesting. So is that where you grew up? Uh, no, London, Bethnal Green. Right, what was that like? I uh, moved out when I was about seven years old and uh, moved to a little village, Upshire. And uh, had a, a, a big manor house there, actually. My dad done quite well for himself. He was... Uh, I used to have a petrol station in London uh, with a car front on it, uh, another car site. He was a car dealer and two railway arches. So they sort of made their money through that over the years. And uh, he then built a car showroom because it was an old bomb site in London. So it was just a lot. So he built a car showroom and then they built uh, loads of flats on top of it over the years and uh, yeah so no he done really well for himself and he's uh was a racehorse trainer in newmarket wow in the end <laughs> so yeah newmarket trainer brilliant something's just happened Can, oh, no. you, it's all right it just it's went. all right it's when um if anything my internet's fucking shocking where we live it's yeah it's not quite in the sticks but it's like not many houses here so they you just want to see where i live they just don't bother yeah i'm gonna ask you about that <laughs> i've got full fiber where I live. You I know, yeah. Know. That's that's weird, isn't it? Into an old 1970s caravan in the middle of the woods. Yeah. I've got fibre. We've got the worst internet possible. So, uh, growing up, um, you got brothers and sisters? Yeah, uh, yeah. I've got uh, two brothers. Uh, my younger brother, Daniel, He's uh, he works for EasyJet and he's done it for his whole life. Uh, when it was Go, he used to work <laughs> with them. Uh, through COVID, he got made redundant. They paid him like 17 grand in redundancy. And uh, then he went into website design, then decided he didn't really like it. So he went uh, British Airways, uh, uh, City Airport, worked there for a bit, decided he didn't like it. Now he's back working for EasyJet, doing his whole job again. <laughs> How crazy. And uh, yeah, he's gay, my younger brother, and he lives with his boyfriend, Richard, who's absolutely, they're just a perfect couple, absolutely <laughs> perfect couple. Been together over 20 years, lovely. Uh, you know, he's my best friend, he's not just my brother. Brilliant. Easy, Joe. So it was funny, wasn't it? Because the, so I had, is a, a, I had a thousand pound, I can't remember why. There was, so I won't bore you with it, but ages and ages ago, there was a mine up north. Hmm. And my mates were like, we need to invest in this mine. And I was like, do you even know what you're doing? Like, why would I invest money in something I know nothing about? But anyway, <laughs> so I didn't and they did. And they lost a lot of money between them mm. because it ended up um, going almost going bust. So the share price went to like 20p yeah. or something from a lot. But then just before COVID, you know, when uh, Tories got back in and they sold they won the votes in all these poor areas where they wouldn't normally get votes and they sold it on, we're going to level up and all this crap. Yeah. So I thought, I you know that. what, that would, would, that's a mine in a poor area up north. Will mm. the government let that mine fail? So I bought 500 quids worth of shares when they were like yeah. nothing. I was like, if it fucking fails, it fails. Yeah, it's like, 500 quid. It's not the end of the world, is it? And, um, the, the government didn't bail it out. If the government bailed it out, it would have been fucking great because I would have got more money. But what happened was they were bought by a bigger company and you just had to accept whatever they said the share price was. That was it. And it, for me, that was great because it ended up being double or triple the 20p. So I got like 1,500 quid out of it. And uh, then then um, the first lockdown started and EasyJet's share price went through the fucking floor. Oh, yeah. So I, I bought 1,500 quid's worth of EasyJet mm. share. share. <laughs> I, don't, I don't invest. This is this is all the money I've got. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Quid. We're all the same, mate. Handsome mouth, aren't we? No, no idea what I was doing at the time, but yeah. I was like, surely. So I, I researched which airline is the biggest, which one is most likely to survive. And I think at the time EasyJet was, was the biggest. That might not be accurate, but they might have been. But anyway, so I bought in this country. I think they are. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So I bought fifteen hundred quid of EasyJet. Yeah. Then, when things started looking good again, that doubled to three grand. 
but I was keeping an eye on it and actually things started looking good again but there was something about another lockdown or something was being rumoured or there was another lockdown or something like that so I, I doubled my money took it, took it out yeah right bloody right and the share price did go back down again because there was something else wrong with airlines yeah. at the time where they, I can't remember if it was legislation or well no I'll tell you what it was because I had this conversation with my brother about it <clears throat> and what it was it was the uh, police checks uh, because a lot of people left the airlines obviously made redundant and they went into other jobs other careers stuff like that and um, when they started building back up, so I said to Daniel, why is there so many cancellations and why is there so many problems? And he said, it's uh, the police checks. He said, it's taking sometimes That's three it, months yeah. to get one back. It's been cancelled. <clears throat> and by them, up people are doing other things. They're not interested there. They've got another career. And that is what held the airlines back. It was the government. Yeah. And that's what happened. So the, the share price did go back down again. And I'm not yeah. sure it ever came back properly. Probably, yeah. probably will now. I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you a quick story about like crazy amount of money made really quick. I bought uh, some crypto and it was uh, Shiba Inu, it was called. <clears throat> and uh, my mate was talking about it and I thought, oh, I fancy that. And I, <laughs> I had some other crypto and I sold it and I bought a thousand pounds worth. About three days later, I watched it go up. It went up to 27,000 pounds really? in about three days. And I held on to it, watched it come down to about 17. Then I sold it. And now it's worthless again. It's great. I don't understand crypto at all. No, one, don't one, ever get into it. It's not good. One of my me. mates is into it big time. Nah, nah, don't and listen he, to him. There's no, you'll never, ever get rich out of crypto. He sent he, me a got, message. I was so lucky. I was so lucky to, to, to have done that at that point. Yeah. And in three days, I made £16,000. Yeah. It can but happen. You can't it, do that. Volatile in it. But he sent oh, me... it's unbelievable. He wanted me to look into it because he knows... If he can get me to concentrate on something, I'll really mm. fucking concentrate on it. So, yeah, because he knows me. Research. But he's, he's, he, he, don't ever do it. Trust me. <laughs> There's no <laughs> winner. The only winner is it's like the, the old monkey thing uh, with the monkeys. Do you ever heard that? And that's how they describe crypto. It's a guy who goes uh, to the in the wilderness and he says, "I'll give you uh, ten dollars for every monkey you can catch." Yeah, yeah, and then the monkey's got fewer. And then it is twenty dollars for every monkey to catch, and they got fewer. And then it was fifty dollars for every monkey to catch, and they got fewer. Yeah. And then uh, he went back again, and I uh, said, "I'll give you a uh, hundred dollars." And then they couldn't find any more monkeys; they was all gone. So he said, "I'll tell you what we'll do is I'll, I'll sell you these monkeys, <laughs> and that's exactly how it works. And I'll give you two hundred. And it, it, it's just that it just doesn't work. It doesn't work." I you're only going to lose money unless you're very, very lucky with crypto. Well, I think that I, I never really ended up looking at it because I knew it would just fucking consume me because I'm very yeah, like, I, never, I can't have a passing idea. interest in something. I have to really look yeah. at So I never looked at it properly, but I think there might be some kind of future in that kind of um, currency. But the, the from what I could see, they're all tied to Bitcoin. And a lot yeah, of them, yeah, yeah, it goes up and down with Bitcoin. And a lot of them <clears> every every bollocks. currency, unless you get one take off uh, for a various reason, uh, is tied to Bitcoin. You can look at Bitcoin's model, and yeah. you can look at any other crypto, and it follows it. Yeah, and what and I ended up saying to my mate was, um, "I'm not doing it." I said the only way I'll ever do it is I'll get when I understand how to have a proper wallet of my own, and I might buy yeah. a little bit just so I'm in. And I understand it. Yeah, yeah. But well, get a Rev- get a Revolut account and just trade through that. It's but, just another bank account. But that's trading into. I want to own it. I want a wallet, and it's mine. Right? Yeah. Stick it on a yeah on a hard drive. But I don't understand how to do that. So and I never really yeah, looked into it. It's very it, so. complicated. It's really. really I think one day when they make it easy, it'll be more popular because the trading apps and all that. I don't trust them. Yeah, they're all a bit sketchy. Revolut's all right. To be honest with you, I don't know. And you can access your money instantly as well. And it's a bank. So yeah. you transfer. And it, do you know what? It's getting more popular, Revolut. Very, very popular. Yeah, I don't know. As, a, as, a, as an online it bank. So it's yeah, like Monzo. Could, it's, just, it's a current account. Yeah, so it's, it's like... It's the same as your current account, but you can trade stocks and shares in it. You can trade crypto. Uh, and you can pay your direct debits. You can use it as your actual account. And uh, there's no fees on it at all. And their uh, transfer fees for buying stocks and shares and crypto and stuff like that are really good. So, mm. you know, if you're going to do it as a start off, 
that would be the way I, I you know that I would do it, which I, I did do. And I, I looked at uh, all the others, and uh, yeah. Do you know? Them. I think cryptocurrency will get. It's it's pretty big at the moment, but I think it'll become mainstream mm. when I always give this an example. It might not be Fortnite, but when Fortnite starts doing NFTs, can you remember when NFTs yeah. were a thing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. They got really popular when Fortnite starts letting players own. So you know when they buy skins and weapons or whatever, yeah. that skin that you own that that was released as a special for you can sell it. I don't know, fucking. Mm some tv show that people watch and now it's not available anymore it's suddenly very valuable yeah but at the moment you don't own it it's not yours you can't sell it it's just part of the game but in the future and i think it will be someone like fortnite or microsoft or whoever apple maybe they'll introduce nfts so they'll say that weapon that you've just bought or yeah. won is yours and then that axe or whatever the fuck they use i don't know is suddenly worth 10 grand <laughs> Because people want it, because it's scarce. Great, yeah, yeah, and you, and it's in your wallet. Do you know what? That's crypto. You've just explained. Yeah, crypto. exactly. That's crypto. Yeah, but it is, yeah. NFTs do all the same shit. It's all the same wallet, and that's why I say I would never do it until I understand what having a wallet means. Yeah, yeah. With things in. I wouldn't there. recommend it to get into it anyway, because I know people have lost a fortune in it. Yeah. And, uh, fortune. I and you listen to these influencers and they're telling you what to do. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. No. And it's usually the opposite. I haven't <laughs> when gone. someone tells you, and that's what they say, buy but, but, but the rumour and uh, sell, sell the news <laughs> when it comes out on the news. I haven't got money to do, to do stock market stuff, mate. But what I do no. know is that it's very controlled by the people who have got money. Oh, so without a doubt. All the oh, without a doubt. If, if because we, what they'll do... If we ever make money, it's pure luck. Yeah. And uh, do you know what? When I did make money on it, it was pure luck. Yeah. And what they do is they'll dump a, a million Bitcoin and a price will just plummet. And they do it. And if you look, you can see it. And then when it goes down, they're buying them again. They control the market. These people yeah. control that market. Well, they control and the rest of the stock market of as well. They're just milking it. It's like a cow for it's them. All the, it's all the same few companies that control everything. They control the whole yeah. stock market, mate. It's a difficult game to play. You have to really understand it. And I don't, so I stay out of it. No. No, yeah, no. I think the only winners there are the people who have got the the, the, the billions of the winners, yeah. unless you're lucky at some point. Yeah, good luck to people. I hope, I hope everybody does well, but I'm not in. I'm out. No. For that I reason, I'm you. out. I, I wouldn't buy crypto again after what <laughs> I've seen. I've seen people lose fortune on it. I was lucky enough to make some money out of it, but I didn't really because I give it to my daughters, so... <laughs> Well, yeah. But they, <laughs> they was right. That's our life, isn't it, mate? It's not for us. Our life no, belongs right. to someone else. Yeah. So, exactly. growing up school, what, what did you do with school? Where did you go uh, to school? Really bad, really terrible at school. I <laughs> uh, hated it. hated every minute of it. I can remember it vividly. And, uh, yeah, as soon as I could get out of there, I did. I went to college to do mechanics after that. Uh, after about two months, got pissed off at that, and that was it. Bang it off. Done out in the real world. And, what uh, age is yeah. that? Uh, I was probably about 19, I would have thought. And that's and, how you got uh, into, what did you do? Plastering straight away? No, I didn't. I done, uh, do you know what? The job market back then, when I was younger, was a lot different to what it is now. I done carpet fitting. I give that about six months. Didn't, do you know what? I was one of these people who didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I done roofing. I done. I was a chef uh, for probably about five years, actually. And uh, I done plumbing probably for about five years. And I just flitted. I didn't yeah. really feel feel like I, I belonged anywhere. Yeah, most nineteen year olds don't. Well, I wasn't nineteen then. I'm going over the years. So yeah, I've probably yeah. I was in the. I was in 30. my thirties, mate. By the time I've got any idea what the fuck I was even doing existing. No, you're right. You're correct. Yeah, you're better off. Do you know what? If I could do life again, I wouldn't do it any different because I enjoyed it. But I would. my advice to younger people would be, don't worry about it now. As long no. as you can survive, keep a roof over your head, go and enjoy your life because when you get older, that's when your commitments start at, from yeah. probably 30, 35 onwards. Yeah. I always say the same thing with, with regards to university. Don't go to university when you should. Yeah, for fucking one of the reasons these days is because it's nine grand a year. But also, you probably don't really know what you want to do. No, unless you're going to be 
very academic or a doctor or a teacher or or whatever those kind of jobs then yeah you're probably going to go to university and end mm. up doing a masters and all that crap but most other people don't know and they're going to university spending a fortune getting in debt and yeah. then leaving with a qualification yeah. that doesn't do them any fucking favors so i always say to people just go and do anything you're lucky enough that you're young with very little yeah. commitments Enjoy your life. go and do yeah. any job do anything if you can find a job that trains you and pays you even better and then later on mid-20s have a look at university courses there's no fucking rush yeah and that's when you've got the brain in your head to actually do it you know what you want to do I'll yeah the, there's a few different reasons for it you will have been paying tax for a number of years so you'll get some breaks in the cost of it mm. because that's how it works you're a mature student but also your your head's a little bit more in a place yeah. where you might actually turn up and do the work. That's Whereas right. when you're eight, party, yeah. exactly <laughs> when you're eighteen and nineteen, mm. it's a great experience, but it's a fucking expensive one these days. My brother went to university up in Hull. My older brother and uh, I used to go up there some weekends to visit, and it was a party. It was yeah, that's part of it. That's great. Yeah, mingling really, really and good. memories of that place, socialising. That's that's a good yeah. experience, but mm. I think that's what most people Basically actually only think is, to get yeah, out of it yeah, yeah. Do, and, so you didn't uh, do college or university uh no no so, i just went into uh just various trade jobs and just worked my way through to i found plastering and uh the reason i, I was plumbing at the time and uh, i was working down in london and we done uh i was doing uh projects like there was one near tower bridge it was a hotel where you can stay in uh, for long periods of time, right next to Tower Bridge, and it was fortune. And you used to go in there, and you used to have your map. Uh, you, you, it's like building Lego, and you had a datum line, set your laser up, and you'd put all your uni strut in, put all your pipe work in, and everything was fusion well for the wastes, and it was really complicated. But you could get get through it, and it was all right. And there was another one, I can't remember where it was, we was doing it's a massive housing development, uh, with flats and stuff like that, with boiler rooms, and it was really interesting. And then I ended up uh, moving up to Rye uh, because of circumstances and things like that. And I couldn't get any plumbing work, and because it's such a little village, it, I was like, "What am I going to do?" And a, a guy I knew done plastering, and I'd fitted bathrooms in the past and stuff like that. And I said to him, "Yeah, I can plaster." And we went down to. Uh, I can't remember, it was somewhere in London, and it was a big food hall in a supermarket, uh, 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 one of them shopping centres, and it was uh, a wall, and it was something like 200 square metres, and I realised at that point I couldn't plaster. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. And he showed me, and he taught me, and do you know what? I quite enjoyed it. I was young. I was probably about 30, 30 years old at the time, maybe a little bit younger, and he taught me, and he took me under his wing, and he showed me, the basics of it and I could do it. So I worked with him probably for a couple of years and then, uh, uh, went off, uh, worked for a builder and then ended up starting my own company up when I gathered enough knowledge. And it probably took me about, I would say to gather that knowledge, to be safe in what you're doing, probably about eight, nine years. Yeah. Sounds about normal. And then I knew, it? yeah, so you, I knew I could um, do it then. The, the, the standard route would be three or four years apprenticeship and then three or four more years after that you probably got yeah. a bit more experience so yeah eight or nine years and you're yeah. like I, and nothing I know what I'm doing me. yeah yeah nothing faces me so that was the, was that the extent to your training and do huh? is that, was that your training literally on the job with yeah it was on the job that yeah, guy no, no. and then yeah, it was experience just, and you know what I think it's better because you work with different people and they've got different techniques and different things and this is what I say about plastering. Plastering, uh, we'll talk about multi-finish. So multi-finish is not like buying a kitchen from Howden's. You buy that kitchen, there's your kitchen. It's the interpretation of what you're going to do with that bag of liquid when you put water in it is what makes it. No one plasters the same. I, I work If I'm working on a job and I've got four plasterers working with me, I can tell you who's done what wall. Yeah. just by the, what they've done. Yeah, yeah. And you can see their patterns and stuff like that and the way they've trailed it up and stuff. And I know for a fact who's done what bit because yeah. I've watched them do it. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's not what the, what you're buying. It's it's the interpretation of what you're making it into. Yeah. That's what I, Which I, is the 
and that's what makes a plasterer. I said it earlier, mate. There's there's art in it, and people will laugh and say, "Fucking hell, I'm just no. a plasterer. I'm, I'm thick." You're like, no. Yeah, no. It's the same no, with Tyler's. Same with Tyler's. There's art in it. Yeah. It sounds deaf, yeah. but I really fucking mean it, and I do mean it. It don't, no, don't, not to me it don't sound daft. I've told before, and I, do you know what? I've been in a bathroom in the past, and it, I've sat there and worked the room out, yeah, for the size of the tile, and for three hours. And I've sat there, and I've done it, I've reworked it, I've tried again, looked at it, it ain't working that way, and it is art. Because yeah. as soon as you put, it doesn't matter where you put a tile on in a bathroom, you can put it up on the fucking ceiling and tile down if you want. You wouldn't, but you could if you wanted to. As soon as that first tile goes on, that sets the room out. Yeah. Yeah. And people don't understand that. No. That's why you get a lot of cowboys. A lot of cowboys get away with it because mm. a, a general public person, will, once it's finished and it's all clean, they're like, oh, wow, new bathroom. Yeah. And then after about a couple of weeks, they start noticing they're looking things at it. Like, oh, yeah. no. That don't look right. Yeah. That don't look right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Our, what. How old were you when you started your own business? I don't know. I can't even remember. Going back some years, probably. Don't know. Is the answer? I'm 15. I've been doing it on my own for probably about 15 years. So right. mid 30s. Yeah. Yeah, late 30s. It's about the right age, isn't it? Good experience. You're not a kid mm. anymore. Stop. Do you know what? I'll tell you, I'll tell you a quick story. When I was younger, I. Uh, uh, I'd never done tiling before in my life, and we're talking about tiling. So uh, a friend of mine, I didn't have any work at the time, uh, a friend of mine went, I've got some tiling if you want to come and do it, uh, in, in in a client's house as well, nonetheless, not just his. So I went there, and uh, <clears throat> I sort of kind of worked the room out and stuff like that, and I looked at it, and I started putting tiles on, and I thought, are they the right way up? And this is before mobile phones. I'm going back some years and I walked back probably half a mile uh, to his, and I went, can you come and have a look? And he went, yeah, that's, that's the right way up. <laughs> <laughs> but he st- he, the problem is with doing a trade uh, for somebody, if you're conscientious and you're a good person, is you don't want to let them down at any point, and you want to make that the best it can possibly be. Yeah. And uh, I think I had that from a young age, to be honest yeah. with you, when I was like, a lot younger. I've had this discussion with tradesmen, and I'm like, I yeah. could never be one. So in what I do, I've done bits and bobs like tiles and grout, especially yeah. grouting for people. But I can't sleep at night once I've done it because I know there's a little something somewhere that's not quite right. Yeah. And I, but the customer's like really happy. I, I'm, I'm, I love yeah, it. Yeah, but you know. But I'm yeah. like, can I just come back and have a look? And, and they're like, well, yeah. we're not in, and it's finished now. It looks nice. What's it's like? I couldn't do it. I'd fucking, I'd have, I'd have a mental breakdown. And that's yeah. where I think, um, Tyler specifically, because that's who I deal with. When you speak to him, now OCD is like a serious fucking condition. If you've got OCD, it's terrible. But yeah, yeah. a lot of Tylers, if they didn't already have it, they've got, they've developed a touch of it because of, yeah. I think for that reason, because they're so yeah. close to the job, literally right neck like a foot away from the face mm. whereas the customer's never going to be closer the than effect. it yeah the it's the overall effect for them maybe yeah. a meter away right. yeah i'll but, make you right it's the over and i say that about plastering because i had a chat with my mate fergie he's been plaster all his life and uh, we was talking about it and he is uh, he's a messy plasterer i've never worked with a plasterer he's so messy <laughs> it takes longer to clean the bloody floor up after you work with him than it does to put plaster on the walls and i said to him Mate, I said, he, he, he went, I've, I've, been, I've been a dropper all my life. I'll always be a dropper. Yeah. And that was his answer <laughs> to it. We are just taking it up at the end. Yeah. And uh, he, I, I had that conversation with him about it. And we look at things and we think, mm, but when it's painted, it always looks all right and it's always good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you're self, so self-critical yeah. over what you're doing because, as you say, your nose is touching it. Yeah. You're looking at it. But when the paint goes on it, it's always okay. I've yeah. never, ever in my plastering career had a customer complaint, not once. I've had ceilings crack, bits and bobs up and like that, but that's just unluck. If you tack a ceiling and you get a crack in it, you go back and you repair it. Yeah, shit happens. And people, people get, yeah, it happens. People so get it doesn't happen off. often. Very, very unusual. Probably four or five times over the years I've had to go back to a job. 
and mm. it's not the workmanship it's just something outside your control has made that yeah made that happen yeah i i, I always yeah, say this to tradesmen there's so many variables that you lot are dealing with mm. that you can't get too upset about if something goes wrong yeah because it's not necessary no one's fault it's you can't blame anyone. It's certainly not your fault. It's you can't something bl- yeah, has happened. There's so yeah. many variables. And then, but yeah. I see tradesmen complaining, oh, the supplier, and maybe someone has let you no. down, but I guarantee you that person didn't wake up that day to think, I'm going to fuck him over today. It's, yeah, yeah. And if they did, they're an arsehole, and you do get the odd cowboy like that, but not many. It's just, mm. shit happens. There's so many variables that no, you like. Does. That's where the experience comes in, that you deal with it. Yeah. As it even, if, even if you are experienced, I mean, there's a job, uh, what was done near the uh, railway pub in Battle, near where I live, and my mate commented on it. He's a good plaster himself, good renderer. I used to work with him. I don't work with him anymore, but I used to. Very, very good, very knowledgeable. And he went, have a look at what they've done uh, opposite the railway. He said, have a look how fucking good that job looks. It is absolutely mustard. When I drove past it, I thought, oh, my God, whoever's done that, that's amazing. What a nice bit of rendering. It was really tricky. Front of a house, old house. And then we drove back past it a while later. It was about two weeks later, and the whole thing had spider cracked. The whole thing was gone, and I was hacking it back off again. Oh, no. What? And it's not the person who's done that job. It's something what was on the front of that house. It might have had weather guard on it. It might have had, you just don't know yeah. why that happened. And there's another one. I'd done a bungalow. I'm going back some years and uh, it had just been rendered and it, it was the whole thing had blown and God knows why. God above knows. And we took the render off and it was in sheets. It was coming off. You didn't have to have, we'd done it with shovel, stripped it. So there was no uh, Kanga or anything like that. We stripped it with a shovel and re-rendered it and it stuck but what was on that and what was on that in the first place must have pulled off it's not the renderer because the rendering was good i could see it was good but what made that happen and another one recently uh near uh uh, in hastings massive house on the side of it they'd rendered that i I was working going past it every day come back looked at it and half of it fell off yeah what makes uh, honestly? I, I feel sorry for these people, if I have to be honest, because they know what they're doing. But what? You, what? And that's three occasions I've seen it in my life, my working life. Like when I say, come it, up like that. it's why it could be poor workmanship, but a lot of the time, there's so many things that can fuck you over. And this, especially fucking outside in this country, it could have been anything because it could be freezing the cold heat, one minute, cold, boiling yeah. the next, and. Yeah. Those rapid temperature changes, I doubt mm. that those materials are tested. They're probably tested to be cold and to be hot, but not... They was all sand and cement. Yeah. It's, all three of them were sand and cement. It could be anything. It <clears> could have been yeah. anything. And it's just one of them things. Shit happens. Yeah. And obviously... No, that's right. I mean, you've got to put it right. <laughs> every, but then you start getting people like point... The natural. I think it might be a, this country thing. They start pointing the finger. Oh, it's yeah. the plasterer's fault. It's the builder's fault. It's the supplier's Recently, fault. Recently, I've been watching... Now. There's a, a guy who does TikToks, and uh, he's uh, the TikTok plasterer, and he shows ceilings falling off. So, like, you've just plastered it. It's obviously distemper or lime wash or something in an older property, and they've not realised, so they've PVA'd it just as normal as you do, and then the whole ceiling will just drop on the floor. I've seen it happen with my own eyes. I've witnessed that. and uh, But you don't know at the time. Because yeah. it just looks like normal paint. And they're digging these people out. And I'm thinking, what are you even saying? He doesn't yeah. know. Do you know yeah. what I mean? He, he, what's on there? Yeah. I, with those kind of things, it's like, I always say, don't don't slag people off. Give them an opportunity. To fix it. To come yeah. and look at it and see how they react. And see what, if mm. they're a cowboy and, and they start ignoring you or yeah, they yeah. took the money and they're not willing to help, then yeah, dig them out then. Fuck them. Because the cowboys, yeah. I'm not. In, I, that, I've got no respect for people like that. But give them an opportunity to, because it might. It right. Probably yeah, wasn't yeah. their fault, and it's not their fault in the first place. Yeah, this is the problem. It's not their intentionally. Sad. And this is why they're doing it. This is wet plaster, and then you'll get a bubble in it, and all of a sudden it will just drop, and that's it. And the whole ceiling will just literally fall off. Yeah. And I, as I say, I've witnessed it. I've seen it happen with my own eyes. I wasn't plastering. I bet you what happened was, whoever that is, I don't know him so. I, I don't. He might be a nice guy for all I know, but I'm I'm going to take a wild guess that he did it once, 
it got loads of views because people don't really know what's going on who aren't in the know. And then he thought, great, I know how to get loads of views now. So he just started doing it again. And that, <laughs> every opportunity he got, because because that's what the social media has done to him. Yeah, yeah. To, to, you know, like you this. get a lot of that on social media. Do you know what really annoys me about TikTok and even Facebook videos and stuff like that? These people go up to really poor people and go, would you like this hamburger or would you like this? And there's money in it. Mm. And they're getting thousands and millions of views on this mm. by giving... And do you know what? Why don't you just take a fucking hamburger to a hungry person and say, have a hamburger? Do you know what I mean? What reason are they doing that for? Yeah. To make them famous? I don't give yeah. a crap about the person they're giving that, a... That's... You do hear stories about people being charitable and whatever, which is great. Yeah, yeah, But they didn't set out to be... to get views in the first place. They just did it, and then it yeah. came out after that they were very, like, charitable and they're a nice person. But yeah, you're right. That whatever gets views, mate, that's the thing. That's what annoys yeah. me when I've got someone in mind for the podcast or they asked me and then I go and look at their social media and I'm like, I can't be asked talking to you because like, I don't know if you're genuine or not. I can't tell because mm. you you're just doing things to get views. So I don't know what's real and what isn't. So I, I just leave them. Find the genuine people. Yeah. Very judgmental. <laughs> I, I judge people. I'd like to think I am genuine. I'm a good guy. Well, it is, yeah. Uh, I'll do my best. Well, the, the reason... Tick, I didn't start following you, so TikTok showed me... Uh, you were talking about um, work drying up in January. Oh, yeah. So that's the... At the time, that's the first time I spoke to you, because I was like, I'll get him on, it's topical we'll talk about it but now it's fucking april nearly that's how no, that's no, it took a while didn't it well that's how, that's it that's how it goes with this because yeah no it's fine i only speak to people who i want to and they're busy and yeah. i'm busy and it's like whatever it takes a while but it's actually better now because i can ask you about it so mm. at, at the time if you if you put your uh, frame of mind back at that time because i agreed with you i was in agreement because i was like this is true he's right but so you were saying something's not right this isn't normal and it and it was january which is not a busy month not anyway. the best month is it yeah but right. even even for january something mm. i had a gut feeling myself and i was like something isn't right but then because the trade all the trades together they don't really have a body that represents them together mm. so there's no way of saying you know like tesco can Engage say it. Yeah, yeah. supermarkets are down whatever whatever there isn't that for the trade so you're only ever getting yeah. people's um uh, their opinion of what their business is doing so mm. a lot of the responses to your video at the time were i'm fine i'm really busy in my area i've never no, been busy no. but, but i think it's regional well no i think of course you're going to get that because some people will be because they're either really good or really lucky one or the other Mm. But I think, I think lucky, more more lucky, to be honest with you. I think in general, if if we still can't do it, but if you could generalise it, I think there is still now something going on where more trades than usual are suffering. And I think that, that a lot of them won't speak up online because of the people who join in to say, I've mm. never been busier, yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah. great. Cause, and then they'll yeah. start thinking... So how do I get busy? And then they start turning to the fucking gurus who say, this is how you get busy. And then yeah, you're like, yeah, fuck, that, no. I, I think it genuinely is a bit of a downturn or a lot of a downturn. Yeah. And we won't well, find you know out. The good, the good thing about that video was it wasn't just uh, plasterers who was coming back to me. It was lorry drivers and yeah, people yeah. like that. And they were saying the same. Yeah. We've never known it like this. Yeah. And do you know what? It was a representation then of the country at that point. And I took a lot in from that and thought, okay, it's not just like the plastering industry. It's there was other people not even connected yeah, and were saying the same thing. Yeah. So, and they're still saying it now. Yeah, It's not right at the moment. It's still not got back. As I say, I could have worked six, seven days a week uh, through the last 18 years, yeah. literally. And at the moment it's bitty. And I spoke to my mate the other day, who's a plasterer, and I said, how are you getting on? And he went, yeah, I've got a bit here, a bit there. And it's the same. Yeah. I think for the first time, there's always been periods where people don't have as much spare money to spend. I mean, I, I grew up like that. I grew up, like, poor, basically. 
Yeah, I did. I never really had any money, but there was always people who did have money. And I think this is the first time in a long time that the majority of people have seen that they've got less money to spend. And I think that's where the... It's not just a gut feeling. I think it's actually true that there is less for trades people to do now. Definitely. I just think the money's been taken out of society at the minute yeah. and it's been funneled off to government and funneled off to the, the rich and the mega rich uh, because of the price increases on anything, yeah. everything. Like you look at fuel, you look at gas, you look at they're taking too much and that's the problem. Yeah. And there is no money to circulate for the little people. Yeah. And that's where the problem is. Yeah. 100%. It's not even the little people. People who consider themselves middle class, they're struggling as well. Yeah. So it's not just poor. It's not just the general working class. It's it's nearly everyone. Yeah. I mean, I've lived through three recessions when I was younger. I've I've seen in my lifetime three uh, pullbacks on the economy, and I've never seen nothing like this. This one's a bit weird, isn't it? Because it it was. Yeah. Never, I've seen a couple, but the other ones were like, "We're all fucked. It's a recession." This one hasn't been like that. It's been like a slow. No, some people death. are really rich. Yeah, yeah. Some people are getting really rich out of it. It's been slow, a slow squeeze, and it's got to yeah. the point now where there's not much left to squeeze because of interest rates, petrol, food, everything. So and I yeah. think that's where the the work declining is coming from. They're building less mm. houses. I know lads that work on building sites, and they're like my my, my two big builders. They're yeah. a couple of brothers, and they're lovely fellas. And uh, their dad owned the company, left it to them. They're multi-millionaires. They are beyond rich, beyond rich. I spoke uh, to one of them, Clive, uh, two years ago was the last job I'd done for him. He built four houses uh, in, in a country setting, beautiful place. And he said, the only one I'm going to make any money on is this last one because the property market is just after COVID where the property picked back up. Mm-hmm. The only one I'm going to make any money on is this one. He said, what am I doing it for? He said, oh, I'm here, and he's he's a worker. He'll go work with the guys as well. And he, he's probably works harder than anybody else on site. And, uh, you know, he's putting his time and effort into it, his money into it. Twenty, God knows how many hours he works a day to do yeah, that. Yeah. Because when he, when he finishes his day's work as a tradesman, and he's a good multi-trade, he's a very good knowledge, he's been doing it all his life, of everything. Then he has to go home and do his book work, he has to do everything else. And he went, what am I doing this for? He said, it's just not worth it. And his brother has stopped building as well. And they used to build streets of houses. They're not a little builder. And that was my main... I mean, builders are a necessary evil. Yeah, you can't make money off of a builder at all whatsoever. (laughs) You're a flat day rate or your prices, you've got to squeeze it if you want to work for these guys. But we're not always busy. We're private clients. So they're a necessary evil in your life. Yep. And you have to have them. And my two top builders went, they're gone. They're not building. Yeah. So this think, is, this is an issue. Yeah, Massive that, issue. And they've kept me going for years, these yeah. guys. That's a good measure, I'd say, <coughs> for most of the country. Just that little yeah. example. I bet that's happened a lot in a lot of places. Yeah. So, so I, how did you yeah. manage it at the time? Because I, I haven't really spoke to you about it, but you did say you picked up some work. You got. I've got bit, like bits and bobs on. I've just got a phone call the other day uh, for uh, a company... Uh, a local company I won't mention any names and it's a £60,000 rendering job and that will save my year when I get that and I will get it as well because that will be pushed through so I've been put forward for it I will get that job and it will be done I'll, I'll take another couple of plasterers with me and we'll, we'll do it it's a, uh, at the minute it's, just, it's a render job and it's hacking off and they want to put a colour rend on it so we'll just go and do that and that, nice. that saved my literally saved my year but yeah I've never, I've never known a struggle like it if I have to be honest never have yeah. I known to be in this situation in all the years that I've yeah. been in any trade, even if it was roofing, even if it was something else, there is nothing out there. The people will phone me. I'll probably get three or four phone calls a week saying, do you need anybody? There's people asking me and I'm like, mate, yeah. fuck it <laughs> you have the laugh at you. I can't even keep myself going. But always my advice to these people is keep phoning because yeah. if you keep doing it, you will find somebody eventually who does need somebody. Yeah. So don't stop. You know, I don't mind a cold call from a guy who needs work. I what don't I mind it. recognised was, because I speak to that many different tradesmen mm. and women, the ones that remain busy, they tend to, so I've got mates, like close mates who are in the bathroom fitters and plumbers and what have you. And mm. the ones that remain busy are generally the ones that have got more 
this sounds obvious, but they've got a lot more contacts and they keep in touch with a lot more people. And like yeah. you said, they're on the no, phone a lot fine. more. Whereas the other ones, I've got a one mate in, in particular, they were always busy, but they are always relying on everyone else being busy because then they'll get a phone call. Yeah, they'll get a pick the crumbs up. Yeah, yeah, they aren't getting that work anymore. So the ones mm. that are busy are the ones that are, were always networking. Yeah. And it's like... Do, I, I, do you know what? To be fair, though, I don't think I can do a lot more. I, I promote my Facebook page. I used to have a website my brother built it for me a while ago, and do you know what? I never got any work off of it at all. Uh, I think social media is the way forward uh, for work. My Facebook page, since I've been doing TikTok, uh, Rye Plastering Services, has literally gone off the chart. Page health, really good. <laughs> yeah. And people are looking. Yeah. And that is the kind of, you know, networking. I've not, I've got a little bit of work out of it, uh, TikTok so far, but not a major amount of work. But I don't know. It's, I can't do any more to get work in. I really can't. Yeah. It's just, you know, you've got to be in the right place at the right time. I think and you've got to make that right place as well. Facebook has seen more of a yellow pages than TikTok is. Oh, without so a doubt. Without a doubt. Facebook is more like, I don't know what the fuck it is anymore. It's a mess as, as far as I'm concerned, but it's the good thing about mm. Facebook is it's got the, the listings. So like plasterers and plumbers and what have you and good groups. Yeah. So there's, there is good groups on there, but other than that, it's a shit show. No, I know it's boring, isn't it? It's photo yeah. storage. I spoke it's, about it earlier. Yeah, it's my Facebook, uh, my uh, uh, company page, which does generate work. It does. It has done in the past. Uh, I had someone message me the other day, and I messaged them back, and they've not got back to me. Can uh, they're in St Leonard's? Can you come and sort of room out for me? I went, yeah, of course I can. Here's my phone number. Give me a call, and I'll pop around and have a look. And I've not heard anything back at the minute, but you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. So it does. It does actually work, and promoting it works as well. So. But I can't think of anything else I can do to get work in. It's being in the right place at the right time and knowing the right people yeah. is how you get work. I it's think... a, a simple one. The other day, the war I've just done, I uh, I was in Bexhill. And uh, a guy, uh, where was they from? Bromley or somewhere like that. A company who does maintenance for WH Smiths. So he went, can you come and have a look at a bit of rendering for us? I went, yeah, of course I can. And it was over the wall. It was a real ball lake of a job. I've never done anything like it. But I thought, I've, you know, I need the work. <laughs> so I think I put like 1300 quid in for it. took three days. Uh, I had a labourer there for the three days. So didn't make a fortune off of it. Uh, done a good job for them. And when I parked my van on the uh, right, next road. And that's how the guy approached me. Obviously, my van sign written, and he approached me and said, oh, I need a bit of plastering done. Can you do that? I went, yeah, of course I can. I'll come and have a look. So I went in there, uh, plastered his bathroom out for him, and uh, that's the war I've just finished. And that that was literally because I was in the right place at the right time. Well, that's what you get in it. That's the, You might be doing something you don't really want to do, and this goes for anything, social media, work, fucking life in general. But because you're doing the groundwork, something else might come of it that you were never no, that's expecting. Right. Yeah. So I can guarantee you, if you don't do anything, nothing will come of it. No. So you do you know just, what? My van gets me a lot of work. Doing stuff, yeah. Yeah, my, my van gets me a lot of work. Probably gets me five or six jobs a year, usually, just for uh, awareness. Uh, a guy, uh, I've done a, a whole house, actually, in Hastings, a Victorian one. And I used to live in Bexhill uh, near the hospital. And he walked past, took a photo of it. I uh, needed plastering done. I worked for him probably for about three or four weeks. It was like a really big job. Because uh, I said to him, how did you get my number? He went, oh, uh, uh, his dad was in the Irving unit in the hospital. And uh, he said, I walked past the van, took a photo of it. And it does work. <laughs> Advertising does work. Yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. So is that you for the year then? The the big job and then worrying about next Hopefully year? Hopefully I'll stop. Well, I've not got a clue. At, at the moment, the way things are, I am literally, it's day by day, isn't it? You have, just have to see. I can't do any more to promote, so I just don't really know where to go. With, I think it's just the financial situation, what people are in at the minute, is uh, it's not a great one. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, people will be able to scrape through a year and then the phone mm. might start ringing as, it, as normal. Do you know what I mean? The, do you know the what, usual... though, to be fair... Where I live at the minute, uh, my my rent is ten pound a month. 
<laughs> Go on then. Because that. that, that's the, the next question anyway. So we, we touched on it earlier, but I didn't know yeah. this when I first contacted you, but then when I started following you, I was like, fucking hell, this guy is interesting. So tell people where you live and, and how you ended up there and why it's £10 a month. <laughs> Do you know what? I won't go into how I ended up there because it's a long story and the police are involved. Okay. <laughs> so we'll leave that there. If you've looked back at my TikToks, I've said some stuff on it and you can have a look. I've done nothing wrong. I have done, I'm completely innocent. I do not. I'm not a violent person. I don't hurt people. I got caught up with the wrong people, wrong family, and it escalated out of control. Uh, ended up in my arrest on t- well, two nights, actually. I got arrested the first day. Uh uh, my solicitor, I hadn't slept for 30 hours at that point because uh, I've got a heart condition. And uh, when it all kicked off, it started playing up. Went to the hospital, had the whole night there. And uh, really nice guys, actually, the uh, two police who was there with me. And I uh, had a really good chat with them. And I uh, then uh, went into custody the next day. Uh, never been in that situation in my life. I've never been in trouble with the police. I don't have a record. That was the first time I ever got my fingerprints and DNA. I don't cause problems. I, you know, I'm, I'm a lover. I don't have these issues in my life. Then uh, I got let out, and then uh, they arrested me again that night for taking my own vehicle back. You're going to have to give me some more information because I'm going to ask you. Go on. You can so, ask me anything, and I'll tell you. You so, can look back on my TikToks. Do you know what? If you look back, I've never watched it. Yeah. I done. I sat there one night. And I done five videos and they're quite dark in color uh, where I just sat there and I've done it. And I said exactly what happened. And it's about 50 minutes of content. If you want to find out exactly what happened to me, there's a story. Watch them five videos. Watch what, them five what's videos. your TikTok called for people who are listening? It's uh, uh, just how I'm feeling. Uh, what is it? I, can't, I, can't even I don't know what it is. That's why I couldn't find oh, you the other day because TikTok wasn't yeah, showing. Fine. And I was like, what the fuck's he called? Hold up. I'll have a look. Just how I'm feeling. Yeah, it's just how I'm feeling or uh, All plasterers. Yeah. All right, so the story's there. You got arrested. Oh, yeah. Have a look at it. They let you out. Well, personally, I've never watched it back, so I don't even know what I've said, but other people have watched it and said, oh, I can't believe that. I'll watch so, it. So there you go. That's a, good, that's a good side thing for you, anyone. You ain't got to watch Coronation Street later. Like, you can yeah. watch it. For anyone who's listening, that. There, there's a story yeah. there. That... All right, so then... So they let you out and then arrested you again? Yeah, for taking my own vehicle back. And when I got let out in uh, in the afternoon, he said I was allowed to return to the property three times, once to collect my car, once uh, to collect my van, and once to collect my motorbike. So when I went there, do you know what? It's such a long story, I'm not going to get into it. Watch that and it'll explain it. Uh, I took the car. Uh, I've not At that point, I think I'm 36 hours without any sleep. And I was sleeping on my mate's sofa in Bexhill, Louisa. And uh, I was just going to sleep, knock on the door, please, they arrested me again for taking my own car. Mm. Yeah. So some someone's just had it in for you, obviously, didn't they? I, I think I can kind of gather what might have gone on, but um, I'll watch those videos. So how did you end Have up where you are now? Uh, but you, but you, by the grace of God, from there, I went... Uh, I was staying with Louisa on her sofa and uh, she's one of these people who are very like, I don't know. She's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's uh, she's very, I don't know, uh, not house proud or anything like that, but she's very all over the place. She's an all over the place kind of girl. She don't, you know, suffers with depression and stuff like that. She's a lovely girl. And uh, I said to her, look, I've got to sort something out. So I went to the council and I said, look, I need somewhere to stay for now so I can get back on my feet. Uh, because they took everything off of me, literally. Uh, over £20,000 worth of money, possessions, stuff like that. Still not there. Still not got it back. And uh, they put me in a place over in Eastbourne. And you can look back. That's on there as well. You wouldn't have put a dog in there. It was disgusting. And I slept there for three nights. Uh, i got a, a mate of mine, Ed. He's a farmer. Yeah, a local farmer and I said to him mate I've got to do sort something out I don't even know I can't live like this and, you know I need to get back on my feet because everything I had was invested into that family and that life and when I it, I got ejected from it they had everything and I had nothing and uh, he made some phone calls couldn't sort anything out and then he made another phone call he went oh I've just thought of somebody else and it was literally by luck I went from 
literally living in hell. And when I say hell, I mean hell. So the most beautiful place you'd ever want to be in your life in one day. Uh, she's uh, this lady's got. Uh, she owns a lot of land in this area. Hell of a lot, lot of farms, lot of stuff like that. And she's absolutely my guardian angel. <sighs> Sorry, Matt, I'm welling up a bit. It's all right. Have you ever, have you ever, um, have you ever told anybody in this way before? Uh, close friends and TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, from hell, I went into. Uh, the most beautiful place. She, uh, one of her farms, she's got four Airbnbs, which she rents out. And she... I can't even say it. No worries, mate. Take your time. Can we have a break for five minutes? Yeah, no rush. Back? No rush. Do All whatever right. you want. Go and pause me then. I'll pause it. All right, mate. Just take your time, mate. Right, mate, you still there? Just out of way. I'm not going to cry like a baby anymore. Oh, we're back. Yeah, well, I'm no, not going to cry. Like it's a funny baby. thing. It's uh, so raw yeah, in my life. It's, the, I've never been through an experience like it. Yeah. The only thing I compare it to is when my mum died. Yeah. The feeling and yeah. the horror yeah. of it. Well, it. A big thing in your life, in it. So you, you've been to what it's you, massive. you described as a fucking dog kennel, an and then somebody's been nice enough to help you out. And I think that's where the emotions coming from. It's like just the mm. it, the shock of living through that you only probably didn't realise at the time, only realising after when you talk about yeah. it. So it's in a way, it's nice because it's got a nice ending. But yeah, it has actually, yeah, it has got a nice ending. So. I, uh, <clears throat> she let me have one of her holiday lets there on the property. And it was, do you know what? You'd have it as your forever home. It was an old converted stable block and it was the last word in luxury. So I went from the worst place you could be in one day to the best place you could be. And I stayed there for about five weeks. <laughs> I, they was, uh, renovating the not old 1970s caravan. Uh, uh, but when I first see it, it, hadn't, it was just a mess absolute mess but we pulled it together i've done a lot of work on it and stuff like that and if you could see it now i'll put a log burner in it and it's uh i had some old 1950s magazines some old building magazines and stuff like that practical builder it was called and that's the wallpaper and it's just i've made it really quirky there's fairy lights everywhere and just made it my home it's been a bit hard through winter not in the evenings because the log burner's on but when you get up in the morning and it's minus five it's probably minus eight in the fucking caravan and you've got to get ready for work. It's It's been painful, if I have to be honest with you. It's not normal living. But do you know what? I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed every moment of it. And if, and, if anyone's uh, listening, you can see most of that. I've seen a lot of that on TikTok. So it's all there, isn't it? Story-wise to the caravan yeah. thing. Very, very lucky person. And she's took me under her wing, this lady. And uh, they're going to build a house on it. Uh, I always knew they was going to build a house on it because uh, it was a f another farm she bought and that had been there for God knows how long, 30 years, the caravan. So he's got building rights, no problem at all. And it's literally in the middle of a forest. And uh, it's. Uh, she said to me the other day, I went round there and I had a chat with her and she said to me, uh, yeah, we're, we're putting free phase in and blah, blah, blah. And uh, we're going to start uh, – the house build is going to come soon and stuff like that. And she said to me, I would like you to be the permanent resident. How lovely is that? Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So I'll live in the woods with, I think there's about 70 acres of woodland. Yeah. It's a really, so some, sometimes in life things you're dealt a bad hand. Yeah. But good things come out of it. Yeah. You have to keep going, mate. It's, uh, oh, I, 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 my I've, got I've been thing. through so much. I say to me, Mrs. Quite a lot. Sometimes I don't believe it myself, but I still say it that it doesn't really matter what you're going through at the time. Bad things might happen, and, and like family members might. But ultimately, in the end, it'll be okay. 
In, yeah, it will. In the end. Do you know what? I'm, I'm a worrier as well. I, I look at the n- negative situation all the time. I think we all do it to a certain extent, but I'm thinking, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if yeah. this happens? But you're paying twice then because it, when you're thinking of it, you're, you're paying once. And if it does happen, then you're paying twice. Yeah. So it's hard sometimes not to think of worst case scenarios all the time. It's but really difficult. It's, very yeah. to do it. it's really yeah, difficult very, to say yeah. to people. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do Don't it. worry about because it. We, we, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it's easy for somebody. You, what problems you've got in your life? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's easy for somebody else to say. You have. That, it's always but good everybody's advice. Got problems. If, everybody. If you can, so don't worry about something that actually is probably not going to happen. So people tend to have scenarios in the mind. What if this happens? What if that that happens? It might not happen. So why aren't no, you right. why I mean, aren't you thinking to yourself, it, what if that doesn't happen? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, because I think it, we're programmed in that way to look at the worst case scenario because yeah. we need a, a, a plan to move on. Yeah. Worry about it when it does happen. Mm. And it might happen. And shit does happen. But you'll deal with it when it, it when it comes. Yeah. And then it'll be fine. <laughs> so you're staying there? Yeah. Uh, at the minute, do you know what is so random? I've met a girl and she's absolutely lovely. And uh, she lives on the same road as me. I live in a village, tiniest village. We must. She's 50 years old, same as me. And uh, we must have been the only two 50-year-old single people in this area. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I've, I don't know. It's really weird, but we just clicked and got on and it, that's pulled me out of it a lot because I think a lot of the reason I used to do TikTok, uh, was because I was lonely. I was yeah. in the middle of the woods. I used to see deer every day and squirrels and stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't see, I didn't have any, if I wasn't working, I had zero human contact. Sounds great to me. I'm definitely the kind of person that could do it. As long as I'd got the internet, I'd be happy. Oh, full fiber, mate. Full yeah, no, fiber. We've, we've talked about this as well. I live in in an area that's not really in the sticks, but it's not <coughs> really in the cent- city center or anything. My internet is fucking shocking. It's terrible. The fastest. It's mental, it? it's my ever closest been. shop for shopping is six miles away. <laughs> and you've got full so fiber, go. and I, I get fucking. Get it did take about three months to get it though. I... What's mine? What is I have it? To be honest, twenty four uh-huh. gig. Is that that's all right? Twenty four meg. Oh no, it's like the, I don't really understand. Yeah, it. I could have yours is hundreds, is, yeah. mine's twenties. It is hundreds. It is and hundreds, it, and it's only twenties when everyone else is at work at the night time. When everyone or like now when it's off term, all the yeah, kids, yeah. Are, it's shit. It's about eight. Yeah, I need I need the fast internet. I need it. Why don't you phone them up and see if you can get it? I have. I, that's what I've done. I've had. I've had trying to put copper in, and they said it will be like two gig. Yeah. Would cop up because it's like so far from the exchange. Yeah, and I was like, oh, "Don't please." The problem please help with me. the problem with us is it's like a village on the outskirts of a bigger town. Yeah, it's a pretty big village. It's not like a village village. It's like a lot of houses here. Mm. The people who live close to the exchange box or whatever it is, they get fast internet. But there's only one. Yeah, further away. So That's the, what they said to me. Yeah, the further, further away, away you are, you are the, the slower it gets. And yeah, then, you're still on them. Um. They did, so I've had engineers a couple of times, and both of them, to be fair, said the same thing. They said, it's down to have fibre around here. It definitely is going to happen, like, this mm. year, because they said last year it's definitely going to happen next year. Yeah. So, and I told my neighbour, this is what the neighbours are like, so I was like, probably going to have fibre next year, and it, it, to me, I'm like, yes, brilliant. He was like, bloody hell, so like, how much uh, how much disruption is that going to cause then? I was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it don't matter. Yeah. It don't matter. They've got to lock yeah. your ass down, mate. It don't yeah. matter. <laughs> don't I just worry want the fast it. internet. Get the internet. Get yeah. the internet. Yeah. So you do social... need it because we rely on it so much. Yeah. Oh, mate, I, I use it for everything. And I've got zero phone signal. Where I am, I've got zero. I can't call anybody at all whatsoever. And I've got zero internet. And when I say zero, I mean zero. There's nothing. My phone doesn't work where I live at all whatsoever. Wow. So without that uh, internet connection, I'd be completely isolated. Yeah, the TikTok's brilliant for that, isn't it? Like for people who. Do, do you know what? From from I think from following you, I won't mention a name because I've asked to be on the podcast and I don't think she wants to, so I won't mention a name. There's mm. another girl who's uh, I think she's a builder or something, uh, mm. gr- uh, groundwork or something. 
but she lives on her own in a caravan as well. And I'm fucking convinced that TikTok showed her to me because I started following you because you're similar. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, and she's really interesting as well. I won't say her yeah. because I don't think she wants me. I asked her oh, to that's be a shame. Podcast, but, Do you yeah. know what? I love to see women in trades. I love to see it. Yeah. Whether it's painters, usually it's painters, but you do get the odd, I've seen on the internet plasterers and stuff like that. But I think it, it's lovely to see that women are actually doing it. And I love to see women truck drivers wow. as well. I've asked loads. That always makes me smile. I've asked loads, but only one has ever agreed to come on. And she was brilliant. Mm. If, if you look at for Darcy's episode, she's a bricklayer. Yeah, yeah. You would not expect someone like Darcy to be a bricklayer, but she is. And it's great. And yeah. she's got like, she's got a whole story and loads of people give a shit because she started an OnlyFans and all the rest of it. But my yeah. point in that is if, if you're a bricklayer, and you've got the assets that people want to pay you a shitload of money to do not that do much it. work. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, you're okay. And you're okay with it. I mean, if you're happy, that's all I give a shit about. If you don't yeah. want to do it, don't do it. Don't let anyone force you to do it. But yeah, mm. I've asked loads. And the reason being, I did some research for the Darcy episode and um, the trades in general, the, the, I think the whole industry, it, the, it's famous that in a few years, the tr- trades are going to be struggling there's, there's not even going to be half the number of tradesmen that are required electricians no. build it. do you know what it's really weird you say that because over in ireland people when uh, that post i put on what got quite a lot of views uh, a lot of people saying go to ireland go to ireland they, really? they cannot get a tradesperson over there yeah and i asked a question to a guy and he went uh do your own research and yeah. I, I had a look and i think there's i, I just what I think is... There's not many people know. in Ireland, that's the problem. So there, Ireland's different. So that I used to live in mm. Ireland. I used to live in Kilkenny. So really? So there isn't that many people in Ireland. Right. And the, with... Um, so there'll be a shitload of jobs congregated around Dublin and I think Cork. Yeah. And that's where Apple, Microsoft, all these massive corporations have got headquarters in Ireland. And right. it's, it's all a massive tax fiddle. So yeah, yeah. Ireland, if and you can Google this, who's the richest country in the world, Ireland are number one or number two. No way. But they're not. Obviously, they're not. They've no. just got that much GDP going through them. Yeah, yeah. That they it shows it. They don't yeah. see any of it. I think Qatar might be number one and Ireland might be number two. Something like that, if you Google That's it. mental. But a lot of the... So the one thing it is doing is creating a lot of jobs. Yeah. Because yeah. they're fucking massive companies. <clears> massive. <throat> so you might be getting a lot of young people going to live in Dublin going to trade yeah yeah, yeah. going to work for Apple or or (coughs) Microsoft because then that gives them the opportunity to leave Mm. and go to America or wherever so it doesn't surprise me that they're struggling for tradespeople because there there wasn't that many of them to begin with there's only about I don't know what what is the 6 million people in Ireland not a lot it might might even be less than that not a lot at all Mm. But this country will struggle. I've got the report. I, I, I asked the... I can't remember what they were called, but it was a government thing, and they did a report, and I said, can I have a copy? And they were like, yeah, sent it me. And um, if you read through it, it basically says in 10 years' time, they're going to be... I can't remember the figures, but it's a huge shortage of all trades. But mm. then I did the research separately to them for the Darcy episode with uh, women in trades. And I think... The women, because women in trades, if you look at the graph, the the, the, the trajectory is fucking vertical. There just isn't mm. many of them. But the percentage increase is very high. If they can get more women, that might save the industry. But they're talking about yeah. that this report was all centred around apprentices, which is great to get more apprentices, which is just going full circle back in time to what we used to do, but whatever. But yeah, get more apprentices. But if they can convince more women, I think that could be the thing that fills yeah. the gap. I suppose it's a bit like the but war effort. I wouldn't know, talk about it too there. much because the guys was away fighting in the war. The women done the men's jobs, and it's the same. Yeah. Same. I covered that on the history of tiles podcast a couple of episodes yeah, ago. Yeah. How about that, <laughs> women, women saved us then as well. And they but, did. Yeah, they did. Stepped up. Um, it makes sense. I wouldn't talk about it too much because I'm not a woman, and I always say these things when I talk about stuff like what we were talking about. I'm not a woman. I'm not a tradeswoman. So I'd have to get a woman on to talk about it. And I've been trying. Yeah, but yeah. I, I haven't. It's, I, yeah. I haven't. Managed do you know what? It. Yeah, they're few, few and far between. And do you know what? It's a shame, really, because women can really do what men do. 
I don't see the the, the the gender gap being that they can't do what we do because they're, you know, you, <laughs> and they will be as good or better. And do you I know think... what? Women painters are better because they've got more uh, patience. Yeah, decorating, women decorating and painting. That's I think. Yeah, that's I think like, there are, yeah, a woman painter will definitely. I guarantee it will be better than a, a male male painter uh, most of the time. Generally speaking, you, patient. It's a generalization yeah. thing, isn't it? But I think if you're honest, and if you listen to Darcy's episode, she's honest about it. There's obviously. I'll have a little listen to that. Actually, there's, I will there's, listen to it. There's obviously things, and it's not sexist or anything like that that men can do that women can't. Obviously. Yeah, and it's, and it's to do with strength. Yeah, biology. It's not like no. being sexist. We're it's not just, doing it on purpose. <laughs> some things are just that. That's just the way it is. And if you were also honest and you look at the facts, it's not the, the trades is majority men because that's just the way it is. Men want to do it and mm. women don't. But what I'm saying is, if they can get generally speaking, I'm talking. But what I'm saying is, if we can get more that that growth in women in the trades is so steep that if they can just take advantage of it and get more, that, that what, yeah. what they're worried about in 10 years' time... It would spur other people on to do it as yeah. well. If they, other ladies, other women to get into trades. They're, they're not going to they're 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 fill the gap. Yeah, they're not going to yeah. fill the gap with just apprentices because they're not going to no. get young people to do it. They don't want to do it. Mm. It's just the way it is at the moment. So apprentices will fill some of the gap, but I think women will be the answer to, to fill the rest of it. Yeah. Well, I'd like to think so. Anyway, that would be uh, yeah, that would be nice. So, social media. Have you? What are your plans with social media? Because, like, uh, I like to follow you because you just do general, genuine posts. Like, I just say what I'm whatever. feeling at that point. I just say what I think yeah. at that point. You know what? I do clickbait. Do you know what I mean? Like, you flag stuff and stuff like that. Uh, if you just put normal chit chat on, you don't get any views. You have to be controversial sometimes to get yeah. them views. Yeah. unfortunately that's what i'm not willing uh, to do i uh, i remember sitting there about two and a half months ago with uh one of my laborers jason and i was i think i had about 600 followers and uh i went to him i wanted to get to a thousand because I, I thought it was a thousand to start getting paid off of tiktok but it's ten thousand and uh at the moment uh I've got up to the thousand and at the moment I'm sitting at about 5,100, I think. Well, do you know what? To be honest with you, because I don't do anything to in- encourage anybody to follow me <clears throat> as well. I'm not one of these people, as you said, I don't go out and think, right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to stitch this person in. I'm going to have that comment, which a lot of people do. And they get their, fa- they get their 20, 30, 40,000 followers in a month. You can do it. But yeah. I thought, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not paying for it. I'm not doing it. I'm just going to do what I, I think. Uh, you know yeah. how I'm feeling at the time and stuff like that, yeah. and I will say stuff. I do clickbait it a little bit, but it's not. Well, you know, I, you're. I it's think just you, random. I think if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll get to the position where, and I, I'm open about this as well. If I could get ten thousand followers, I'd be fucking delighted. If I could get to ten thousand well, followers, I think to be honest with you, I think if you TikToked, you would get them very quick. I, oh no, I don't. Because no. the way you're very good. Uh, you explain things in a very good way. Yeah, You're but, easy to deal with, and uh, it, 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 and that's what I think people need sometimes. They need things explained to them. Yeah, I think because a lot of a lot of things are complicated in life. Yeah, and it's nice to have somebody sit there and say, "This is why this has happened." In my opinion, yeah. it doesn't have to be right or wrong, but you've got your view on that. I'm full and of shit. I think shit. that is why I think you'll be yeah, good. I'm totally, honestly, I'm full of shit. I look, I read about stuff a lot, and I've got <laughs> opinions on things that will be wrong We're, a lot. But Shame we're all full of shit, mate. We're I all think full of shit. Uh, social media is the wrong place for it because yeah. me and you can sit here and talk for three hours. I could say to you something an hour ago, and I might have been said something wrong, but I can rectify it an hour later by saying, "Oh shit, you know what yeah. I meant." On TikTok, if I say something wrong, I'm fucked because you get attacked immediately for being wrong. Yeah, but which you is don't, true. Which you is right. don't know. This is the thing you don't. I I don't have any haters. The only thing I get is people who are over enthusiastic, like stalkers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so I'm either. not even joking. I am not even joking. I've got this one girl at the minute who is absolutely besotted with me. <laughs> and uh, I find that really awkward. I've seen because obviously I've seen she, the comments. I don't think she's me- I don't think she's mentally well. I thought it was someone yeah. who knew, who you knew. Because it was weird, the comments were. No one else. Did you comment no, no. and say, please come and see me and things like that? 
Yeah. Oh, it weird no. sometimes. Uh, yeah, so I find that more awkward than somebody who's a bit of a hater because you get people like that. They're keyboard warriors. Do you know what? It's more off of a duck's back on it, yeah. stuff like that. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I find that because I don't know how to approach that situation because obviously if she's in a vulnerable state herself, I don't want to start making her feel worse. Is it definitely a, is it definitely a her? These people. Huh? Is it definitely a her? Oh yeah, 100%. Is it, I was going to say, is it definitely a person? Could just be a fucking. Oh no, person. no, no, def- no, definitely a person, definitely a her. Uh, she's followed me <clears throat> since the start, and uh, she's got the. Um, I've got a girlfriend. No, oh, no. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's one of them. It's like oh, my you should God. take. I, I'm, now you're right. Actually, I was going to. I was going to be really bad then and say you should take advantage of it and see if you could get followers by. No, but no, it's wrong no. to if, you know if the other person's how, not. Other yeah, people are feeling. That's not. I, I could be the thing that tips over over the edge. Yeah. I don't want, I'm not that person. I yeah. just am polite, pleasant uh, to her and stuff like that. I don't really comment on her stuff because a lot of it is just so bizarre. It's unbelievable. Uh, she said today about you, uh, I showed uh, my girlfriend Emma, we were sitting there and I went, it come through and she went, since you've uh, found a girlfriend, you've really changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you saying to wow. me? Jesus Christ. Yeah, just, it's proper blood. Just sounds like a fan to me. Super fun. Well, no, it's more, it's more than that. It's more than that. Unfortunately, because I don't want that. I'd rather <laughs> have someone who hates me because I'll just go, look, I'll just send them a love heart. Right, yeah, see you, might, later. you might be able to help her out. If she's like genuinely following you and she like genuinely likes you, you might be able to help her out somehow. Yeah, she's just by being nice. <laughs> so that's your plan, basically. Just carry on doing the same thing. See if you can get to 10,000 and then see if you can get some viral TikToks that pay it's, i, I it's, have no issues with that people will be like oh but why not yeah no, do you know what? I'll, I'll do it for two reasons i'll be honest with you i'll do it for two reasons my two reasons are i would like to get ten thousand. i would like to earn money off of it of course i would but i enjoy doing it yeah. as well yeah you know i'll sit there and i'll just think i might put tiktok on for a couple of days and i've let it slip since i've met my girlfriend and that i don't really do as many tiktoks as i used to because i was on my own in the middle of nowhere i had nothing else to do i was just firing them out there you know, if I could find a subject, I'd, I'd do it just for the interaction with other people. And I could talk to them, comment. And it's like, so you, you know people then, you know. I, I, another uh, girl I uh, met off of TikTok, she helped me through some really hard times in my life. Daisy, her name is. And she's absolutely lovely. And we spent hours on the phone talking and it was through TikTok. And that is the reason I think that I'd done it in the first place. When I see that, and I just thought, hold up a second, you can actually meet people and they can enrich your life. Yeah. For it. You do get that. Not haters. I don't really get any neg- negative comments at all, to be honest with you. But I don't know. It's a, a funny one. It really is. And I will keep doing it. I'm not yeah. going to stop doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. Keep doing it, mate. Like I said before, something else might come of it that you know don't even know Ooh. what that is yet. No, that's right. So, what do you do away from work? Apart from uh, living in the forest? I've got a motorbike that I've not ridden for a while, but it's been winter. I've got a really nice bike, actually. I've got uh, It's 27 years old now. It's a, a Kawasaki Ninja. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's uh, in 1996, they made... Uh, all Kawasaki's are green. And they made uh, a red one. And I've got, I've got that. So... I might dig it back out and have a go on that. Uh, metal detecting. When I have my metal detectors, I don't have them anymore. <laughs> They're uh, still tied up with uh, in the problems, <laughs> uh, shooting and stuff like that. And just like various stuff, really. But it's more summer hobbies rather than uh, winter is a bit crap. I always ask people, uh, I don't have any hobbies. You must have something. I don't. The, the closest... Don't the close, the yeah, but this is like this is it. This is my hobby, I suppose. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Work. What's the problem with that? I do enjoy doing it, but it's like it's a lot of work. Chase the the bit the hardest bit about it is the guests, I suppose. But the closest hobby that I can think of is um, I do like films. I'm definitely a film buff and TV yeah, shows, yeah. I suppose. But I don't know if that classes as a hobby. Everything else, mate, and I keep saying it's, it's all about the kids. Everything. No, that's right. And that's, yeah, do you know what? You don't need a hobby when you've got a young family. Yeah. 
you don't. It's like that's your hobby, definitely. Going through it with them the other day. And do you know what the good thing about having a young family is? When you go to soft play, you can get in there with them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, mate. Really little. Have you ever you been the ones that, you ever been them ones that are made out of wood? No. Fucking ease up. There's one near us that's like, it's all wood. It's got pads inside, but most of it's wood. And I'm like, it's, it's really harsh on the knees. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, kids, you can go there on your own. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit older now. Uh, nine, yeah. and, nine and six, they are. Oh, bless. Fortnite. Do you know what? I've got a, a seven-year-old as well. I've got two older daughters. I've got uh, Morgan, who's 24. I've got Cody, who's 21. I've got Sapphire, who's seven. And I have her every weekend, and I love that girl. It's not like having a child with you. It's like having a little mini adult. <laughs> She's not like any kid I've ever seen before in my life. She is amazing, absolutely amazing child. All and your kids are girls? All that. your kids are girls? Yeah, all three of them, yeah. Uh, mine are boys got a couple of boys fucking yeah. you got your work cut out then <laughs> let me tell you i don't know i Definitely. think girls might be more difficult i don't know Nah, do you know what they're not do you know what the good thing about it is uh with girls is you get boys eventually and uh i've got a uh, my older two uh clayton uh, he's with morgan and he's lovely and i've got Stephen, who's with cody who's lovely so i've got boys yeah, yeah. you end up with boys in the end in-laws yeah so yeah it's uh I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't change. I think I would like to have had a boy when I was younger because I always used to think that. And uh, I'm just, I would never change my three girls because they're so individual and they're so lovely. All three of them are completely different characters and they're just lovely kids, all three of them. And I'm very lucky to have them. Nice. And I'm lucky they're thank, the older two are thank good boyfriends. So <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, that would be my fear with a girl. Yeah. When they're old enough, get a boyfriend. Oh, no. <laughs> you better start saving up for weddings and stuff like that. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So um, we're almost done, mate. So what I always ask people for, I think I think you've covered most of this. Uh, so advice for people who want to get into the trade. And loads of people say to me, don't do it. But don't say that. If somebody genuinely wants to be a plasterer. Right. You, Let me you did it you. an odd way. I have, I have people uh, contacted me, uh, young guys contacted me on a regular basis saying, have you got any work? Have you got any work? I have been through my whole career of plastering and I would love to have taught somebody how to do it. I'd love to have passed my knowledge on to somebody else, but no one has ever been able to do it. They start off cane and it's the same over the years. It's even worse now where we are now at this point. They start off cane, and a month later, they regress. They go backwards. They're not not interested in doing it. You need the hunger. I think the best time to get into a trade is when you're a bit older, when you need to earn that money. When you're yeah. a kid, you don't need to earn it. When you're living with your parents, you don't need to earn it. When you're older and you've got responsibilities, that's when you should get into a trade. Yeah. And uh, I have people phoning me. A guy phoned me the other day. Have you got any work? And I said, look, I'm struggling myself at the minute. But I said, keep phoning keep phoning because you only need to find that one person who thinks I need a labourer at the minute and then you've cracked it so I said don't give up keep phoning that's my advice to them yeah and I took people who phoned me as well labourers yeah. in the past when I was busy and the life was good in this country and he was working people phoned me up and I went yeah come and I'll give you a go and they probably last three four months and then they would they'll disappear yeah yeah social media wise what would you advise people because believe Social it or media. not, you're, um, to me, you're a good person to give someone some advice because you're not, mm. you don't claim to be a guru, as in, I've got 100,000 followers and if you give me some money, I can make your fucking, I can get you loads more work and I can get you loads more followers. You're gen genuinely, you've built your following off being genuine and, and yeah. like, proper discussion posts social media i would say do it uh if i rewind my life back a year ago i wouldn't even video call my daughter i didn't put myself on anything i found it very awkward uh to uh put myself on camera to speak to somebody and circumstance uh has changed that completely and I find it quite liberating, to be honest with you. So my advice to anybody with social media is put yourself out there and do it. 
Hundred percent. Because I'll tell you what, it's you'll find it awkward at first, but and then your barriers drop, and you just don't care. And yeah. that, that's a liberating thing. It really is to yeah. be in that way. And I never thought I'd be that person, but since I've been doing, uh, it's only TikTok I'm on. Uh, I don't do any other like YouTube or anything like that. But since I've been doing it, it's really changed me as a person in a better way because I'm not so self-critical. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I'd advise anybody to do it. Yeah, hundred percent. Get yourself out there. Yeah, I should take that advice. I do a little bit now and again, but I've always been like, I don't really want to be on camera. Yeah, you was the same as me. But do you know what? I look at you and the way you present yourself, and the way you explain things, and the way you talk. You'd be very good at it. And do you know what? Some things that I say might help somebody else. Yeah. And I think you got to look at it in that respect as well. Yeah. Because I get a lot of comments, uh, you know, really positive comments and stuff like that. And I think you're helping people. You're you're out there doing it. And, it's it's uh, the I same as when, when I get messages about the podcast, because it, it's not huge, but unbelievably people do listen to it. And it's, yeah. I get messages and it's all, it's nothing special. It's just me having a chat with someone. That's it. I'm just interested mm. in what people have got to say. But what happens is people can relate and I think that's why I like your TikTok as well, because you're not cynical in a way that I've seen some people who I used to follow turn into this machine yeah, yeah. of getting followers. And I'm like, I'm not interested mm-hmm. anymore. But yeah, I can relate to the things that you say. Well, I think one of the things you, you literally did a post once and I was like, I completely fucking agree. And it, it didn't really go anywhere, but it was a genuine post. And you said, I don't really feel right do you know? And you weren't yeah. like being saying that you're depressed or anything like that. You were just saying, "Do you ever get that when you're like, what the fuck am I doing?'" And I'm like, "Yeah, I do." Yeah. And then obviously, then you can read the comments and and get a lot of people who can relate, and that's great. Do you know what? That's the worst thing about TikTok is when you've got something important to say, it never goes anywhere. When you spat a load of shit, then it takes off, and it's annoying. It really yeah. is. Yeah. It really is annoying. So I just think I want people to listen to that sometimes, yeah. and it just it gets like. 47 views <laughs> it's like what the hell but, but that's so i would say you definitely get more than 47 probably a few hundred is low oh, for no, you you look back you look back I, I was getting i went i was to say it's the tiktok doldrums and they do it on purpose so i've no doubt about it because they want you to buy they want you to pay and this is what they do and they'll hold you back hold you back and then they'll give you a post what launches and then that that will go you know not viral but it will get like three four or half a million views or something like that and then you're back to 200 again. Yeah. And they want you to pay. And I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not paying for it. I would even think... So people are thinking in really big fucking numbers because of TikTok. They're thinking in millions. But you imagine if, say, 400 views. So you get 400 views, which is low, very low for anyone. Yeah. If 200 of those people actually watch the post all the way through. Mm. You imagine getting 200 people in a room. And yeah, li- exactly and, that. And fully listening to you. It's not going to happen. I think that. I think that. It's when I get one that goes to like 400,000, a football stadium holds 30,000 people. I've just reached 400,000. Yeah. It's an, an amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah. And, then you, and can- you can look, when you look at the format, you can go through the, and, and like analyze it. And some of mine have had like three days. Yeah. Watch three time. whole days of people yeah. watching it, adding yeah. up. And yeah. it's just like, what the hell? Yeah. It's and just that I find it quite amazing. You don't even honest. know who you've reached or who you've helped, no. but you may have really helped somebody. Yeah. Like seriously. I think, yeah. So it's great for that respect. We're done, mate. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No worries. Do you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. It really has. I've really enjoyed it. If I'm to be honest. And do you know what? You're easy to talk to. And uh, yeah, I think get yourself out there a bit more yourself. Mm. I'll, I'll stick to the podcast for now. Yeah, uh, I don't. Well, I honestly I don't think that. I have enough things to say. I'm very boring. Yeah. Genuinely, I'm not just saying that. I'm you don't boring. fucking I'm shut up. You're having a laugh at you. Yeah. Boring person. <laughs> you don't stop. <laughs> you you are certainly not boring. I couldn't get a word in edgeways when we first started. <laughs> like, uh, uh, uh. So do you know no, what that might really be? Cool. Yeah, do you know what that might be? I I don't speak to well, people for days on end. <laughs> so yeah, when I get the opportunity of fucking well, verbal diarrhea. If you ever want to do another one in the future, 
I'll always uh, have a chat with you. Yeah, definitely. I, I say this if to everyone. To... There's nothing stopping yeah. us from doing another one. Why not? If you want to come up with some subjects or something just... like that and you want to have a chat, what? then we'll go yeah. through it. We'll just get an Do update. Do you know what? I didn't tell you that story. I'm going to tell you it now. I worked for a company in uh, uh, Hastings. Yeah. And it was called... Uh, I will name them, actually. Don't put this on there, though. It's uh, Sam Rook. I've got, uh, uh, got to beat that out now. You shouldn't have said it. <laughs> go on, carry on. They used to be... Uh, they will put it on there. I don't care. No, I don't like slagging they're, people uh, off because they're not here to <laughs> give their opinion. Go and, on, carry uh, on. They used to do all the council contracts in the area, and uh, I'll see some sites there. This is when I first moved over here, and I had no work, and I was trying to uh, build myself up and just you know find my feet in the area and stuff like that. So uh, they took me on, and uh, I uh, uh, done a job. It was out in one of the villages. I've seen some horrific sites working for that company, horrific, uh, with uh, social housing and stuff like that in the area. It's fucking Carsey, mate. Hastings is, I think, probably one of the worst places I've ever seen. When you go into bad places in Hastings, it's not just bad, it's like bad, bad. And uh, I've done this job. Uh, it was, a, it was a, a, I went to have a look at it and they had a water leak and there was lovely people. Uh, it was like a cottage uh, out in a village, and I went, he went, oh, don't patch it up. He said, I need to sort it out properly. And I went, okay, I'll just put a report back and say, look, ceiling needs to come down and do it do it right. So we took the, uh, they agreed to it, uh, took the ceiling down, and uh, I, I, I said to him, I need a labourer. I can't do this on my own. It's going to be a lot of crap come. I think it was lava as well, which is even worse. So there's going to be a lot of crap come out of here. So uh, he, they sent me this guy. He was about 60 years old. And he was a good worker. I'm not putting him down. He'd he done his job, what you should have been doing. So we ripped the ceiling down. I tapped it and I plastered it. And off we went. So everybody's happy. Uh, a couple of days later, I was in the yard and this guy came over to me. And he went to me. Uh, he went, that job you done the other day. I went, what one? He went, the one out in that village. I can't remember where it was. And he went, uh, that's a two-day job. That's not a day job. You take two days to do a job like that. And I'm like, what we was done by like three o'clock <laughs> and he said you're gonna make us all look bad if you keep doing <laughs> stuff like that and it was it's disgusting and it absolutely disgusting i couldn't believe what i was hearing because yeah. to me that's normal you go in you take a ceiling down you put it back up and you plaster it yeah that's your day's work yeah not two day job yeah you can't do it that quick that goes on a lot in this country mate it's fucking disgusting isn't it and this is a cancelled contract company yeah. they've not got the contract for it anymore so yeah i don't know they've had a lot of bad press over so yeah. bleep it out because do you know what they're they're on they're on their knees now they're, they're building back up they're starting again they've lost all their council contracts it's gone to somebody else so no i don't want to put them down Definitely that goes not. on everywhere you know when I've, I had these discussions years ago, right, about working from mm. home and uh, four-day weeks. Because yeah. I used to listen to a podcast called Freakonomics, and they, yeah. they look at things. It's more productive. It's more yeah. productive. You're more productive working from home. That's yeah. been known for years. So so when they when they were forced to do it, and now they're trying to force them to go back because they're like, for all, all different reasons, we could have another discussion about that. But the, um, the four-day week thing was always a thing for me as well because – it's possible. What tends to happen in this country, it probably happens in every country, but we're not that efficient. We can we tend to stretch things out to last the week yeah. or last the day. And I was trying to explain to my son the other day that there was loads of roadworks going on by us. And we Don't were late. Started on that. We were late for school <laughs> every day because of it, because it was fucking horrific mm. for a couple of weeks. And I said to him, It looks like they've finished. And it was like a Wednesday probably. I was like, I guarantee you even if they are finished, they won't pack up until Friday. <laughs> and I was right. The Friday came, yeah. they packed up in the morning, yeah, early are. finished. So they've dragged that out so it'll last till a Friday. Caused Do you know what? The, the money was wasted on roads in this country is unbelievable. And I know it firsthand because both of my daughter's boyfriends work on roadways and they repair roads. And I know Stephen, a while ago, didn't work for 16 days on the trot and he got paid for it. Really? Because they had a problem with the planer. And they wow. couldn't do anything. And he got paid for sitting indoors. And they st- I looked at a TikTok, funny enough, the other day. To repair the roads in this country would take 500 years. To repair <laughs> them to a standard that's uh, like you'd have somewhere else in a, a, a probably a more non-developed country than us. Their roads are better. The potholes in this area are disgusting. Absolutely I, um, off the chart. 
I've, I used to say to, I don't say it anymore, but because I used to work with Indian, Indian guys, and and they were like, if you think your roads are bad, they're not, nowhere near, and and if you think about it, we are lucky, but it's all historical. Everything to do with the good things about this country is historical. So we're yeah. lucky that we've got motorways and roads and trains that will take us where we need to go fairly quickly. But that's all historical and we don't make them any better. No, they actually get, they get worse. I agree 100%. Yeah. And the prices you have to pay to get on a train now is... If you if I wanted to get a train to Scotland, that's going to cost me 400 quid. Yeah. I know that. Without even looking at it, that yeah. cost me 400 quid. It's crazy. And that train's going there anyway. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, what the actual yeah. hell? And that's, we, we, we touched on it before. It's to do with letting private businesses profit from these things. Yeah, and it's true. So it's like, why, why would they improve it for you if it doesn't doesn't give yeah, them more even profit? Even the for crossings, even the for crossings owned by a French company now. Yeah, and they said when that bridge was built, when it's paid for, it will be free. Because I remember at the time, and no, it's not. Yeah, I wouldn't have believed that for a second, and I would have been no. called a conspiracy theorist for not believing them. Right. You conspiracy yeah. theorist, you know it. Okay, mate. <laughs> All right, mate. Thank you very much. I appreciate I appreciate you being so open and telling us the the story that we can look up and get the details for. I, yeah, I, have a look at it and see what you think. Make your own mind up. Yeah. As I say, them TikToks, what I've done, I've never watched them because I can't bring myself to do it. And I don't even know what I've said in them <laughs> now. And that was months ago. That was six, seven months ago. I'll have a look. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll I've watch it. That. I'll watch it. and then I'll, I'll, I'll Drop get, me a text and see what you think. I'll get my missus to watch it separately. Yeah, yeah. And I'll give you two two opinions. Yeah, do it. But this is what I'm facing at the minute, and it's not good, because yeah. I'm not a person who hurts people. Yeah. And yet, I am a, a criminal at the moment, so... <laughs> I'm sure it'll all come really good, bad. mate. You'll be fine. Yeah, I can well, tell. Do you know what? I always say, life's like the... It's like the movies. You have goodies and baddies, and the goodies always win. In the end, they'll always win. Hopefully. Because we're good people. Yeah. 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 All right then, mate. Nice one. Nice Thanks one to end it on, mate. Appreciate Thank it. you very much. Not a problem at all. See you, mate. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye everybody.